Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's two o'clock, so I suggest we, we make a start. Okay, so welcome to this meeting of Witchhaven Planning Committee. I'm David Wilkinson, committee chairman. The vice chairman of the committee is Councillor Mrs. Elizabeth Eyre on the front row there. And we have the following officers present. Mandy Lads, committee administrator. Dawn Evans, principal lawyer. Kieran Power, head of development management. Nick Atkinson, who is a manager from the planning team. And other, plan other planning officers will be presenting items as we go through the agenda. We also have Andrew Fell, the council's drainage officer. If you're registered to speak, I will call you forward to a microphone at the appropriate time. The nearest fire exits are to my right. If the fire alarm sounds continuously, everyone should leave the building immediately and make their way to the assembly point on the car park. Can I remind everyone that meetings are webcast live on YouTube. We'll now move to item two, apologies for absence and notification of substitutes. Mandy. Chairman, I've had apologies for absence from councillors Thomas Haverman Mart, Mrs. Audrey Steele, Ed Cohen, Adrian Darby, and Aaron Powell. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Mandy. Um, item three, declarations of interest. Mandy. Chairman, for item 10, councillors Rob Adams, Elizabeth Eyre, Adrian, sorry, not Adrian, Tony Miller, Mrs. Margaret Rowley, Tony Rowley, Mrs. Francis Smith and yourself, Chairman, have declared a non-pecuniary interest. The Speaker, David Addison, is known to them as he is a former planning officer at the Council. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mandy. We'll just go quickly through the agenda to see if there are any further declarations of interest. Um, item 8, Church uh, Land of Church Road, Sedgeboro. Councillor Mrs. Eyre. Um, the, the gentleman who owns the land, Mr. Alan Stowe, is known to me. And also, I'm the county councillor for, it may not be relevant, for uh, Sedgeborough and therefore involved with the education side, uh, the Church of England First School. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, anything more on number eight? No. Um, item nine, Evesham Road, Harvington. Any declarations? No. Item 10, Church Lane, Norton. Any declarations? Yes, Councillor Adams. Yes, I'm known to Councillor Pollard, he is a parish councillor at Norton and I represent them on the districts. So it's non pecuniary <coughs> sorry. Okay, so thank you Councillor Adams. Um, and finally item 11, Frame House, Back Lane, Kemerton. Any declarations? No declarations. Okay, thank you. We now move to item 4, which is the minutes of the last meeting. The minutes have been circulated. Mandy, have there been any corrections or amendments or changes? Chairman, I've not received any comments on the minutes. Thank you. OK, thank you. In which case, um, can I have a proposer to accept the minutes as a record? Councillor Mrs Eyre, and Councillor Sinton, you're seconding it? Yes. So that's proposed and seconded. Um, do you want to just take a vote on the minutes? Thank you, Chair. Um, this, the minutes have been proposed and seconded as a, as a true record of, of the last meeting. Those in favour, please raise your voting cards. Nine, Chair. And Councillor Adams? Because I had an application in on there, so I would have. You were you weren't in. Weren't yes, present you weren't present. One. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we now move to item five: the five-year housing land supply. So Isabel, are you going to present? Is who's presenting this one? Chair, but if, it, if it's only for noting... Sorry, it's, if it's yes, but uh, I thought we were going to have a presentation, that's all. No? No presentation? OK. Sorry, I th I, my, my fault, I thought it would be a presentation. Um, in, in which... Yeah, OK. Um, in which case, we're, we're asked to do three things. We're asked to note the publication of the report. We're asked to note that we have a 3.68 years land supply and we're asked to acknowledge the fact that we really need to move towards a five-year land supply. Those are the three things. 
Um, so, if, uh, if there are, does anybody wish to speak on this item? No? Uh, Councillor Mrs. Rowley. Well, I'm rather disappointed we aren't having a presentation because I find it quite difficult to understand all the detail, uh, particularly in view of the government's proposed changes in the, the five year land supply. I don't know, could we have a I, I there, from I, the officer at that last talk? I, I don't know, I'll, I'll ask officers at the back. If you have a specific question, I'm sure we're in a position, I'm sure we can um, find a response. Would you like to come forward and perhaps just deal with a specific question from Councillor Mrs Rowley? We're not, not short of microphones. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Isabel Roberts. I'm one of the senior planning policy officers. Um, so the five-year housing land supply, the document that we have is for the monitoring year 2021 to 2022. Um, the MPPF changes um, that are proposed haven't come into effect yet, so do not impact the five-year housing land supply currently. Um, when the MPPF is, comes out um, with those proposed changes, then we will inform you of what those changes will be and how they will impact on the, on the five-year housing land supply. So we can give you more information on that. If you would like further information on the five-year housing land supply, then I'm happy to um, provide you that in an email or um, through you know, a conversation face-to-face, -face, if that's easier. I'm sorry, I feel that we've had a presentation on the five-year land supply back in December, and maybe it was on a Teams, as opposed to a live one, but I feel we've had that. Can you clarify, Karen? Um, I can't recollect a specific, uh, can't recollect a specific one, but it might have been um, my manager, Joe Simmons, who gave the five-year housing land supply um, presentation. There was um, recently a presentation on the MPPF changes, which included how they might impact um, Witch Haven. Um, but obviously those aren't in effect yet, so we can't take those into account currently. Uh, Councillor Dyke. Uh, well, thank you, Chairman. Just to say that the, the report on here says South Worcestershire five-year housing land supply report December 2022. So this is a revamp of what we have already seen. Yeah. Yes, I think, I, 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 I think that's the case. And I think what we're hearing is that there has been there have been presentations, but this is the first time it's formally come to this committee for noting. I guess that's the position. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Councillor Drolly. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just happy to move the recommendation uh, at uh, two one two three. Yeah. For a second for that, yeah, Councillor Mrs. Eyre. Just take a vote on that, so do one, see if everybody's happy with that. Thank you, Chair. You, you've all noted the report. It's been moved and, and seconded. Can I just therefore have uh, a show of hands as to uh, noting the report, noting the three-year um, housing land supply position, and also just just looking at the need, noting the report. Nine. <laughs> Unanimous, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we now move to item eight, which is agricultural land rear of Churchill Road. And we have one speaker on this, and that's Mr. Chadwick. Is Mr. Chadwick here? Yeah, Mr. Chadwick, could you, if you could come forward to the um, uh, supporters microphone. Okay. Mr Chadwick, well, welcome to Planning Committee. I don't know if you've been to one of these uh, meetings before, but what will happen is the officer will present the item. You then have three minutes in which to say your piece, uh, and then uh, there will be a debate, and you maybe ask some questions. OK? OK. OK, so, Nick. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, members. So this is an outline application for the erection of 10 affordable dwellings, cross-subsidised by six market dwellings, the provision of new open space for Sedgeborough Church of England First School, 
new open space for community use and associated works with site access to be taken from Cheltenham Road and it is an outline application with all matters reserved other than access. Just before I get into the, the main uh, presentation itself, just to note members, there is an update to this application which I'm, I'm hoping you have all seen. <clears throat> it essentially relates to initially consultation responses, uh, an updated response from the, the housing team um, and also an update in regards to the, the parish housing needs survey. If you've not seen that, I can read through that if you would like me to. If that would be, yep, <clears throat> okay. Apologies, this is a bit, a bit dry. Um, so the housing team advised on the following to up-to-date evidence of affordable housing need as follows. The strategic housing market assessment 2021 update indicates a minimum net imbalance of 117 affordable dwellings each year over the next five years across the Witchhaven district. In terms of the housing register, brackets housing for you, as at the 21st of February 2023, housing for you data shows that there are 2,504 households registered with a banding which indicates that they have a local connection to the Witchhaven district. These households have the following bedroom need. One bed, 1,310. Two bed, 711. Three bed, 366. Four bed, 104 five bed 12 and six beds one as the site is located in a rural area the council's rural letting policy would apply when allocating affordable housing priority would be given to households with a local connection to the parish of sedge barrow so barrow say in the first instance followed by those households with a local connection to one of the surrounding parishes which includes ashland hill elmley castle hinton on the green and aston somerville Again, as of the 21st of February this year, housing for you data shows that there are four households registered with a local connection to the parish of Sedgeborough. These households have the following bedroom need. <clears throat> one for one bed, one for two bed, and three for three beds. There are a further 20 households registered with a local connection to one of the surrounding parishes. Again, Ashton de Hill, Elmley Castle, Hintel on the Green, and Ashton Somerville. And these households have the following bedroom need. 13 in requirements for one bed, four for two beds, two for three beds, and one for four beds. The above may be an underrepresentation of housing needs. And in relation to the parish housing needs survey, there is not an up-to-date housing needs survey carried out by Witchhaven District Council for the parish of Sedgeborough. And then just one more sort of administrative uh, update, which is the officer update. Um, affordable housing need has increased with the more up-to-date figures compared with the figures that are stated in the committee report. And just to be clear, members, that's essentially a correction to paragraph 7.1.27, which should refer to, even though full, brackets not significant weight, can be attached to the neighbourhood plan policies. Um, so, members, I'll just... I'll do twofold. I'll, I'll run through some slides with you. I'll also just give you a very quick... Uh, a sort of appraisal of the site if that is okay um so firstly as always members we have the the application site which is shown by the the red line boundary before us i think obviously you, you've read in the report that the application site forms part of a, a larger field it's only one small area of it which hopefully you can see uh, from this slide again with access <clears throat> running to the north being uh, achieved off cheltenham road just a quick air photograph just to kind of give you a little bit of context of the, the site itself, its current use and the landscape around there. In relation to this next slide, it's, a, it's referred to as a, as a feasibility layout. Essentially, this is an indicative plan of how a layout could be achieved for the site were you to approve the application today. But just to remind members that this is an outline application, so you are not, uh, which is with all matters reserved, so this is not a layout that would be approved. This is just indicatively how a scheme could be brought forward if this was to be approved. So again, you can see where the housing would be located relevant to also the landscaping that would be proposed. Uh, and again, back to the photograph, just again, an indicative landscape master plan of how the site 
could in theory sort of merge with the, the remainder of the site and its surroundings, but again, it is only indicative at this, at this stage. Uh, some illustrative massing an analysis, which again is, is indicative, but this would sort of show how a site would, if approved, if brought forward, could be sort of assimilated into the surrounding landscape from kind of a, a sectional perspective, so how it would view, be viewed. And you can make out the, the sort of purple area, which is indicatively where the, the housing would be and, and how that fits into the site's topography and the landscape. Access is one of the matters that approval is sought for today. And again, that's detailed within the committee report before you. This would be the, the proposed access point. So members, apologies, this is probably a little bit, uh, a little bit small for you to see. Um, but again, this shows the access arrangements and how visibility displays could be achieved onto, onto Cheltenham Road. Um, a reference is made within the report to some public rights away that run through the site, and this is just for your, your information, really, members, to sort of show the, the, the alignment of the, the rights away network that currently passes through the application site in the field. Uh, just a few photographs, so for, for those of you who don't know the site, hopefully this will be able to enable you to orientate yourself. This is the view westwards along Cheltenham Road, showing the, the site access. So again, you can see the, the visibility that would exist uh, from these two slides in, in both directions. So hopefully it gives you an indication of why the Highway Authority have come back satisfied with the proposal. And again, the next view is sort of looking, looking east from the access point. Uh, and this is a view from the public rights away. So again, back to the to the previous slide and the report where the rights away are referenced. You can see the the gate there, and hopefully one of the posts. You can make out one of the little finger mark away markers showing the the rights away. So this is as it currently exists. Uh, and again, looking south along the right away, so going through the the wider field, the southern end of the the public rights away. Uh, looking southwest along the the public rights away. And again, you can make out the application site of the field around. Um, this is looking southwest towards Sedge Barrow First School, and again along the, the public right of way. Um, Bridewell Drive and the properties that form it, which again are referred to within the report, <coughs> uh, again are those properties that are just, just visible in the, the background of this photograph, just for a bit of orientation and context. And again, looking north along the existing public right away and again you can make out those properties previously referred to. This photograph's taken from Cheltenham Road itself so obviously how the site would be viewed from the adjacent public highway again just to give you again a bit more context of the the site's prominence in the or not in the the surrounding landscape. Thank you chair. So just to summarize members the the main considerations relevant to this application essentially the principle is the first thing we are looking at to consider and as noted in the report, the site does not technically comply with the requirements of policy SWDP2 uh, of the development plan, which is the, the council's locational strategy. However, the site is considered to be a rural exception site through policy SWDP14 and would be sited adjacent to a category two settlement. The applicant has been able to demonstrate a need for affordable housing in this location, which would help deliver a proportion of the identified local housing need for the parish. The development of affordable housing in this in instance is considered to justify the market housing element, which is also proposed essentially as an enabling development for the overall scheme to come forward. And this is also whilst being mindful of the council's current five-year housing land supply issue, which obviously has been, has been discussed and you'll be more than aware of which obviously that latterly engages the tilted balance in favour of housing development subject to the consideration of all other material matters. On those other matters, council, councillors, um, this scheme would deliver um, additional school playing field in addition to affordable housing, which is presently limited. It wouldn't meet fully the local housing, affordable housing need, but it would deliver a substantial proportion of that through eight social rented and two shared ownership properties. The site is not currently afforded any special landscape designation or significance, and indicative plans have been shown, as you've seen, how a housing development could be accommodated within to the site. Although concerns have been raised by objectors to the application <clears throat> from a highways perspective, these objections and concerns are not shared by the highway authority. <clears throat> The development would 
give an opportunity to deliver greater pedestrian and cycle access from the site and connections to the village. There's been no identified ecological harm as a result of the proposal with an overall final scheme able to deliver some biodiversity net gains and enhancements. <clears throat> An appropriate drainage could be achieved for the site to the satisfaction of the lead local flood authority. So overall members, officers are of the opinion that the proposal has a number of benefits which this scheme would deliver, predominantly in relation to the delivery of affordable housing. With the exception of the local parish council, there's no statutory consultees are objecting to this application. Subject to the imposition of conditions which, are, which do form part of the recommendation before you. Although there has been some harm identified through the loss of an agricultural field, when considered in the planning balance and the tilted balance is engaged through the lack of five year supply, the harm is not considered to be significant and demonstrable. And furthermore, the harm that would be caused is considered to outweigh the benefits that the scheme would deliver. And therefore members, the application is recommended for approval subject to the completion of the 106, which is detailed in the report and also the conditions within section eight. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Nick. Okay, uh, Mr, Mr. Chaudhary, you have three, three minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Members, <clears throat> for giving me the opportunity to address you today. My name is Mark Chadwick, and I represent Citizen Housing Association and their partner, uh, developer partner, Woberly Homes. Chairman, you just had a, a very comprehensive report from your officer, so I'm not going to take much more time um, th th this afternoon. Um, I'm available for questions. I'm quite happy to take some questions. I note the parish council's not here who's, who've objected, uh, and nor are there any objectors. So I, I don't see any opportunity or necessary, necessity for me to go through the speech I had prepared. But as I said, I can take questions. One point I would make, though, um, your housing, uh, the, the, the issue of affordable housing won't be lost on, on, on members within this room. Um, effectively, your office has just highlighted there are 2,500 families or individuals on the, on the housing um, waiting list at the moment. Um, I, I would say that figure has increased by 1,100 people stroke families just in the lifetime of this planning application. So since we submitted the planning application, your housing register has increased by 1,100. Um, which is quite significant. This application has been effectively uh, worked on uh, for the past two years, working with your officers, working very, very closely with your officers, and it is designed to provide affordable housing for just some of the 24 families that are identified in need uh, that effectively are based at Sedgeborough or, or its satellite communities. Chairman, that's all I'd, I'd like to say. Um, I don't want to waste any more of your time um, in light of the very comprehensive report you've just had, but I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Mr Chadwick. Um, if you could remain in your, in your seat, because there may be some questions in, in, in a few moments' time. But before we go to questions, um, the, this is the point in the proceedings where I would normally invite the local ward member to speak. Um, the local ward member, Councillor Kersey, unfortunately can't be here today, but she has provided some, um, some comments, which I will, re I will read out. This is from, from Councillor Kersey. I have a long-standing engagement. I'm not able to be at the planning meeting. Please accept my apologies. I have real concerns about the above planning application going before the planning committee in its current form. The report has errors and inconsistencies, particularly in its reference to the very recently adopted Sedgeborough neighbourhood plan. I note the correction in wording in the committee update at 7.1.27, but this falls short in its update. The inaccuracies which I believe arise from not enough communication between our planning officers and policy officers leaves the recommendation potentially incorrect. There is also information not currently reflected in any of the report or available to the planning committee, considerations not limited to but pertinent to landscape. I would respectively ask for this agenda item to be deferred to the 30th of March planning committee for all the above to be addressed. This deferment will enable the planning committee to make a fully informed decision on this application. As I say, those are Councillor Kersey's words, not mine. So effectively, Councillor Kersey has requested that the item be deferred. Um, I've taken advice on this matter. I'm told that you, one can't simply defer an item simply by requesting it be deferred as a, a committee member. Uh, whether the local member or not. 
However, the com this committee, of course, always has uh, the right to consider deferment if it is so minded. So I think at this point in time, I must, ask the, I must invite the committee to consider whether or not they wish to accede to Councillor Kerr's request to defer or whether or not they wish to determine this application today. I think, uh, oh, Councillor Rowley, so I think Councillor Sinton actually just, just pipped you, Tony, to the... Unless you're happy for Tony to go first. Okay, you go first then, Councillor Rowley. And then yeah. I'll have Councillor Sinton, Councillor Mrs. Eyre. Yeah, th th thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, it was only well, about a week ago when we, uh, in Council, um, approved or adopted the Sedgeborough Neighbourhood Plan. Uh, it's so fresh. And to go against items within that plan so early, before the ink's dried, to me, it is a little bit foolhardy. So I, I would go along with the local ward members' uh, suggestion that this is deferred so that we have greater policy comment on the neighbourhood plan and the implications of that. Um, this is too fresh to immediately go against that. So uh, I, I, I would certainly move for uh, deferment. Uh, we have another committee in four weeks' time, so we wouldn't have to wait that long. We do need more update from policy with regards to the uh, neighbourhood plan. And um, I understand from, from what you've just read out, there are issues regarding landscape, um, which really need to be looked at. And indeed, um, uh, I think generally the report to me seems to have not changed since the access changed, uh, which came about through the failure to complete the, well, not failure, but uh, the land acquisition wasn't completed, therefore the access changed. And I don't think the report has really been updated, so I'd like the officers to look at that as well. So I'll move for deferment, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Rowley. Um, I think we said Councillor Sinton went next, Councillor yes, Newton was there, and then Councillor Dyke. I'd very much like to second that, uh, Mr Chairman. I, I do find it quite remarkable that the, 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 the objections of the Parish Council were dismissed in one sentence um, when we heard last week an impassioned plea about their neighbourhood plan uh, by a highly articulate, highly learned, highly intelligent councillor who knew exactly what she was talking about who lives there. We also have 54 objections from people who live in the village. I was in the village. I had the pleasure of visiting this village a few weeks ago as chairman of the council to visit the school. Uh, it's not a huge place. They've got 54 objections. And I do think we owe it uh, to the Sedgeborough Parish Council who weren't able to come for obvious reasons to revisit this. And I would also suggest that we have a site visit as well on the same day. I do feel that this sort of... When we get this amount of objection to something locally, um, we can't just dismiss it out of hand. And I totally agree with Councillor uh, Rowley here that we should defer this until the end of the month. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Michel, you are next. To support the two previous speakers, but add in another comment for uh, our officers. I'd like to be uh, reassured that the numbers of the housing teams take into account all the applications in other authorities that refer to our villages. I am aware of two or three applications in Stratford-upon-Avon uh, that refer to our villages having access. So, in fact, they are our needs are being met through Stratford-upon-Avon. And I believe some of our needs around Sedgeborough are being met by Gloucestershire, uh, which would be Cotswold District, I think it is. Uh, so I'd like to be assured that when we are doing our numbers, we are taking into account all those applications where affordable housing is provided for our villages in Gloucestershire, Warwickshire, and any other nearby uh, local authority. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Kieran. Thank you. Um, yeah, in terms of housing need, obviously we're, we're guided by, the, um, by our housing team, but that's something we certainly can take back. But the advice is set out in the papers. In terms Historically, of the they've never taken into account Toddington or Quinton. No. Like I said, we, we, 
for, from, a, from an officer's planning officer's perspective, we're, we're sort of reliant on that, but we can, can take that back from that perspective. In, t in terms of the neighbourhood um, development plan, clearly that is an important factor. Um, in, in terms of the planning balance that's been set out for you, but if you aren't satisfied that that's been fully addressed within the report, then that's something obviously we can take away and update. In officer's view, it's, it, 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 there is um, a clear policy um, exception for exception sites that, that allow for these sites to potentially come forward in principle. Um, but if you do require further information, then that's um, obviously that's something you, you, you've, you've stated and, and that's something we, we can take away. Um, and I, th I think in, in terms of the sort of other matters, we will we'll update, the, the look through the reports and make sure that they're, they're updated. Um, th I think there was there was clearly a, a mention or a change from significant weight to the NDP to full weight um, because the status of it changed from when probably the, the report was initially written to till, till the um, to when the plan was made very recently. Um, so that was corrected, but um, we have, you know, from an officer's perspective, just to clarify, we have given it full weight in terms of considering the, the proposals, but just to reassure you on that. Um, but I, I don't think that necessarily changes what the, the, the motion on the table or anything, but just to, to reassure you. Thank you, Kieran. Councillor Dyke, I think you wanted to yeah, speak. Thank you, Chairman. The points I was going to raise have been covered, and I'm very happy to support deferment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm, uh, I, I will also um, vote for deferral on this one. When you've got a site coming forward, which is on agricultural land, which is outside the development boundary, and we do know that we have got to treasure our um, land the way we can grow food, there's no point in building houses if you can't feed the people that are living in them. So um, when we have an application like this coming forth and, uh, and relying on our uh, housing numbers not being as they should be, um, which puts extra pressure on this committee and on the officers, it is essential that we look at all aspects of any plan coming forward to make sure we can give due diligence when we're, when we're looking at a plan like this. So. Yes, I would um, most certainly um, vote for uh, vote for deferral on this one. Okay, are there any more speakers? No? Okay, before we go to the vote, I must just ask officers if they can confirm that what we have on, what we've got in front of us constitutes sufficient material planning reasons to defer, because we can't just defer on a whim, we have to have re reasons. Kieran, can you confirm, perhaps we just ought to confirm what the planning reasons for deferment are, and uh, perhaps you could confirm whether or not they constitute sufficient planning reasons to support deferment. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, th I think largely it's, it seems to um, re uh, revolve around two, two areas, uh, additional information, um, in particular house, housing need and how that's calculated. Um, so I think that's, that's something that planning officers here can't, can't answer today. Um, it, we, 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 we would, would need to follow that with our with our housing team. Um, the other aspect is um, a further policy review, really, in terms of the neighbourhood development plan, because of the concerns there. I think officers um, are quite clear that we, we we have set out in the report what we think the position is. But of course, if members are, are concerned that that doesn't give correct weight or hasn't investigated that fully, um, then I think you, you're entitled to ask us to look at that again, um, which you which you've done. So I think I think those two grounds are, are, are certainly sound. Um, I think there were some other mentions about the some, some of the bits in the report, and certainly Councillor Kersey's statement mentioned that there were some inaccuracies. So obviously we we would review any reports and um, and and check that. I think um, we we relatively satisfied that that the information in there is correct. But um, of course, um, if, that, with any committee report, we will review when it comes back. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. For me, I think also the the request for a site visit I would consider to be a, a reasonable a rationale for deferral as well. In addition to to what yeah, Kieran set out, I'd, I'd absolutely like a site visit. Yeah, if that's, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was the feeling we're we're getting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're comfortable from the planning perspective, Dawn? Are you comfortable from the legal perspective? Thank you, Chair. Just for clarification, Councillor Rowley, you've obviously put forward um, the reason for defer on the base if you need further information to be populated in the report for the 30th of March planning committee 
um, obviously on the, the additional information on housing need and obviously the policy considerations review of the of the neighborhood development plan when it, it relating to this application are you happy also that you you want a, a site deferral for a site visit as well added to those reasons uh, yes and is that seconded by councillor Eyre? Uh, sorry was it councillor sorry my apologies councillor sin to myself happy with uh, that? yes and my apologies for Thank to councillor Rowley for calling me by the wrong name earlier Thank you. In that case, we'll move, we'll move to a vote. So this is a vote on deferment. Dawn, can you take the vote on deferment, please? Thank you, Chair. Obviously, you, you have the, it's been moved and seconded to defer on the, on the reasons we've just discussed. Those in favour of deferral, please raise your cards. That's all by yourself, Chair. Uh, yeah, and OK. Against? Abstain. Thank you, Chair. That, that is, is carried to, to defer. Thank you. We will now go to item nine, Evesham Road, Harvington. Uh, we have one speaker, uh, Ms. N Natasha De Silva. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hey, um, right, I think we're all set. So, um, Natasha De Silva, welcome to the Planning Committee. I think you were, you were here for the previous item, so you've seen the way it, the way it all works. So I won't go through the, the process, but I guess we'll go straight into the, uh, into the item. So, uh, Nick, over to you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, Agenda Item 9 is a full planning application for the demolition and redevelopment of a Class Q consented building and its replacement with five new dwellings at Evesham Road at Harrington. Uh, and there's no updates to this report, members, for this item. Uh, again, members, I'll just run through a few, a few slides very, hopefully very quickly with you. Um, so in this first slide, members, again, you can see the, the, the red line boundary in the application site. You can also make out in the, the middle of that red line the <clears throat> existing building and also the existing access as, as is currently... Uh, currently on site as we speak. This next slide, an air photograph, again, just to give you kind of a bit of a context from what you've just seen. So again, you can see the, the barn building in the centre of the slide, and again, the access to arrangements, but also how it relates to its, to its surrounding and its current agricultural use. So at the moment, members, this is, a, a, obviously we said, a, a barn. So here you can see it's the existing elevations and plans fairly of a fairly typical design for an agricultural barn that is seen throughout the the district and, and dare I say it nationally. Um, in terms of the proposal, there's obviously the, the dwellings here which you can sort of see set out in, in kind of more of a kind of a, a courtyard setting, if you will. Units one and two, we discussed some very quick elevations, plans here for how they'll be viewed. So again, you can see the arrangements, you can see the the design of those properties, the, the fenestration, glazing elements, the, the roofing profiles. So that is for the first two units and the, the floor plans for the first two units. Slightly tweaked, not, not too many differences for unit three. So again, you can see its elevations on each, each side. And then again, just a very quick floor plan. Unit four, uh, slightly different, obviously you've kind of got the more uh, sort of central element to it from, the, from a symmetrical perspective, but again, largely similar to the properties, only a slight variation from the others. And again, the, the floor plans there, which hopefully you can, you can make out. And <clears throat> Unit 5, which again, again, very similar, just some very slight design alterations, but ultimately all, all five properties are, would be very, very similar in their appearance. Um, the reason I wanted to show this next slide, <clears throat> and it's again, it's relevant to the site's planning history, um, 
there was a class Q conversion for this uh, for this barn previously, and this is essentially the plans that show what was approved. So this is under the current fallback position, which we'll come on to later. This this could be built out tomorrow. So this this is the plans that we have approved as a council. So there's there's a reason why these are shown. Is that obviously part of the argument that's made in the case officers report is essentially one of betterment, <clears throat> and that we feel, excuse me, as officers, that the scheme proposed now to this current application would look discernibly better from a visual design and landscape perspective than this uh, this approved scheme, which was uh, very much of a of a conversion nature of the existing existing unit. Just a couple of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sort of landscape plans, if you will, that the agent has kind of put forward. Again, just to sort of show the, the, the five units, how they would sort of sit in relation to each other and how they would sort of broadly be viewed in the, in the surrounding landscape. Again, just a few slides to familiarise yourselves with the site if you don't know it. So this is a view from the access looking, looking northwards. And again, southward. So again, you can see that <clears throat> quite good visibility is achieved in in both directions. Hence, there's, there's again no objection from the from the highway authority. And again, just looking from within the site to the access. This is this is the existing farm track, shall I say, that that serves the <clears throat> the barn. Obviously, that would be improved as part of this application to a stand, standard suitable for for the residential dwellings. <clears throat> and again, we have the barn. So again, this is what you can see at the moment. This is this is the barn that would be in, demolished through this application, but there is that that application to essentially convert that into into a house. So again, fairly <clears throat> fairly standard in its appearance and fairly standard in its nature. And again, just in the view of the of the the, the public highway where access would be achieved to, so you can make out the barn just to the to the right hand side of the the hedgerow, hedgerow there. Just very quickly, members. Um, so again, the application site is is located off Evesham Road, and is, as you've seen, is surrounded by agricultural land, uh, with a reservoir also to the site, to the south. Sorry, the the barn, as we mentioned before, subject to this application has been previously granted Class Q prior approval for its conversion into five dwellings. So whilst the number of dwellings proposed now is the same as previously, what this application would do instead of converting it. It would be its demolition <clears throat> and the erection of the buildings, as you've as you've seen. the The application has been subject to an objection from Havington uh, Parish Stroke Town Council. However, there are no other statutory ob objections that have been received. In terms of the principle of the development, the proposal again would be largely contrary to the to the requirements of the council's development plan in terms of its locational strategy, <clears throat> and that's broadly because of its rural location and also the, the local neighbourhood plan. Um, and again, primarily because this is deemed to be an open countryside site. As such, we can't necessarily say that this application accords with policy. However, the council has received and determined a number of similar such applications throughout the district in many years, <clears throat> many of which have been refused by the council for that basis, uh, and which, on the basis that they largely go against the principle of the conversion of a class Q. And as noted within the officer's report, most of these refusals have actually been appealed and upheld by the planning inspectorate, uh, largely on the basis of the weight that should be afforded to, to the fallback position offered by the Class Q approval as a material planning consideration. Uh, taking that a step further, this position is also supported by national case law, where the High Courts themselves have deemed that a Class Q approval can legitimately be considered to represent a fallback position for alternative proposals for the site such as is proposed here and again members there's also the consideration of the council's current five-year housing land supply position as we've previously discussed in the opinion of officers whilst the proposal does not accord with the development plan this fallback position is very strong and it is a very strong material consideration which again the recent appeals and case law which we referred to, all represent sufficient justification for the planning balance to support the application as before you. Furthermore, officers are of the opinion that the design, scale and massing of the proposed buildings would be acceptable and result in no overall harm to the character of the area or to the wider surrounding landscape. And again, would re represent an overall visual improvement from the appearance of the barn, as we saw before, that would be 
converted otherwise. And finally, officers also note that one of the dwellings would be secured as a two-bedroom first home, so it does have a small degree of affordable benefit to the scheme as well. So whilst it is considered to be contrary to the development plan, due to that fallback position in the case law and the aforementioned benefits, the application is recommended for approval, members. Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nick. Okay, Tashi, you have three, three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon. I am here to speak in support of this application for five dwellings at Evesham Road, Harvington. I thank officers for their constructive feedback and assistance to date and fully endorse their positive recommendation. The application site consists of an agricultural building with Class Q planning consent for conversion into five units. It has been established by case law that permitted development schemes can be a viable fallback position for alternative proposals for development on the same site, with the 2022 consent setting a precedent for five residential dwellings on this site. The design, scale and massing of the proposed dwellings would ensure that the development integrates effectively with the surroundings and would not harm the significance of the landscape character or street scene. Furthermore, 20% of the site is proposed as green infrastructure and this will increase the open nature of this part of the site which is currently covered by the agricultural building. Due to the location of the site, orientation of the proposed dwellings and distance from neighbouring properties, there would be no detrimental impact on neighbouring properties in terms of loss of light, overlooking or overbearing impacts. A further factor to be taken into account is that the large existing agricultural building would be replaced by smaller individual units, which result in breaking up of the massing when viewed from the public vantage point of the road. Additionally, as requested by the affordable housing officer, a two bed dwelling has been provided specifically as a first home, which would not be provided under the class Q fallback scheme. This scheme provides an opportunity to create a much more considered and sympathetic high quality residential development with an overall consolidated built form, reduced visual impact and landscaping enhancements in the new build scheme. In summary, the officer's report provides a detailed justification for granting the application. Were the dwellings approved, the officer has suggested a number of conditions be attached to the decision notice, which we will happily accept. We hope that this is a straightforward decision to approve the scheme in line with the officer's recommendation and trust that members will agree. Um, I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. If you could stay in your seat, because there may be some questions um, slightly later in the proceedings. Uh, the local ward councillor, Councillor Thomas, um, can't be here today, but he has asked me to read out uh, some comments. This is Councillor Thomas's words. I wholly endorse the submission from Harvington Parish Council, which strongly objects to the proposed change from the approved Class Q consent to the demolition of the existing barns and the erection of two, five two-storey two houses. The proposal is very similar in concept to the rejected application 02734. The site is outside the boundary of Harvington and the development is thus contrary to the requirements under SWDP, policies SWDP 1 and 2, and adopted Harvington Neighbourhood Plan Policy DB1, as well as guidance contained in the MPPF. The proposed house's designs, number, visual impact and layout in a cluster away from any settlement does not complement the area's rural character and are not appropriate in this location. The council, by which he means the parish council, not, not this council, contends that the site as proposed in this application would stand out as an isolated development of five two-storey luxury houses in open countryside not, all in keeping, not at all in keeping with the surrounding open agricultural area. Further, far from enhancing the setting and the environment, it would be even more visually intrusive into the environment than the previously rejected application for five bungalows. The submitted design statement advised that the total area of the proposed new building is identical to the area of the existing agricultural building. However, this excludes the fact that the proposed buildings would surround a courtyard which occupies the overall footprint of the existing agricultural building, which would be demolished. The visual effect is of a disproportionately large development out of proportion to the existing rural location. The application provides for 13 car park spaces. This would not comply with the adopted Harvington Neighbourhood Plan Policy IH3, which states that all new houses must provide at least one parking space per bedroom, which equates to 15 spaces for this development. For these reasons, the committee should dismiss this application. As I say, those are Councillor Thomas's words, not, not mine. 
Um, okay, so we'll now move to questions. Does anybody have any questions for the speaker? Yes, Councillor Rowley and Councillor Mrs Smith. And yeah. Councillor Mrs Eyre. It's just, just on that, almost that last point about car parking. Um, you could create two more spaces within there, can't, can't you? There's sufficient external space in addition to those spaces to add another two car parking spaces if required. But 13 was what was asked for by the streetscape design guide that was adopted at the time. Councillor Mrs Smith. Thank you, Chairman. I'm concerned about the presence of um, the reservoir. How would you deal with that? Because if there's children in those houses, it could be extremely dangerous. Um, well, the reservoir is outside of the develop is outside of the red line of the development, but we have got a condition to be attached for landscaping, which includes boundary treatments, um, which we could enforce we could enforce down that side to make sure that it's not accessible. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I, Do you want to come back on can that? Can I just come back on that, Chairman? I mean, uh, this has been a bugbear of mine, not particularly about reservoirs, but we have on the suds on various mm. um, of our uh, estates, we have suds, and they're supposed to be adequately fenced. But if you go to most of them, a young child could quite easily crawl through and slide into the sud. Now, I wouldn't want that to happen. It would, if you're going to do something, you must do something which restricts completely children entering that area. OK. Um, I'll come back to you in a minute, Nick. I think Councillor Rowley is quite yeah, urgently I mean, wants that, to say something. That would be relevant whether there's these five dwellings or, conver or the cube conversion. It's no different. No, this isn't proposing anything worse than what is already consented. And I do know that reservoir. I think it's... It's raised up, isn't it? It's not like... Um, I'm looking at Andrew, does he know the reservoir? But I think it's raised, uh, it's built up with, with banks, isn't it? But, but my point is that it's no worse than what we've yeah. already got. Uh, OK, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor, and, and thank you, Councillor Rowley. That's probably some very good knowledge. I, I think it's just to be clear, members, <clears throat> we have to be very careful about what we can and what we cannot take into consideration here. The presence or health and safety around a reservoir located some distance away, I would suggest that's kind of above and beyond what we can reasonably consider under planning. Um, I mean, ultimately, you could make the same argument for any development that's by a main road. A child could walk out, they could get hit by a car equally as dangerously, but that's that's above and beyond a our considerations, and it would also, in my opinion, be above and beyond the reasonable expectations of what we should require an applicant to do. So, it, it it's not that it's not a valid point. <clears throat> I just feel it, it's I wouldn't consider that to be a material consideration that, that's relevant to the determination of the application before you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Are you content with that response, Mr. Uh, Councillor Smith? Thank you. I think Councillor Mrs. Eyre was next, and then Councillor Miller. For the young lady about what what the roof I don't quite understand what the roof is made out of the roofs so let me double check that I've got it written down somewhere uh, just for make I don't know if anyone's eyesight's better than mine I, I can't read it on the screen but on the plans behind you there is an annotation there I, I, don't, mm. I can't I can't read what it says unfortunately Standing seam roof. It, standing seam roof. Yeah, so what is the standing seam roof? Um, it is a metal composite panel roof. Sorry, Elizabeth, can you put your microphone on, please? The question was for the officer. It didn't seem to be a sustainable location near enough to. Uh, other developments yeah I, I, I don't disagree with you and I th it, this kind of ties into part of the comments by the local member about the the previous scheme being refused the, the previous scheme when put forward there was no conversion element to take into account so we were literally considering an application for market dwellings in or and the, the one unit in that location and it wouldn't be supported by the council development plan it, it is outside of a recognized settlement it's very much open countryside, as you've, as you've seen. Um, however, the reason why, if, if had the bar not been there, and this was just a, a greenfield site, and we were saying 
they're proposing housing, this this really wouldn't be a recommendation for approval. The, the thing, the matter that has switched the, the planning balance is very much that class Q approval being on site, which, like I say, it it doesn't always sit comfortably, but case law does tell us, <clears throat> as have a number of appeal decisions, which this council has unfortunately not been successful in defending, is that, as the, the speaker has said, that, that is a fallback position that you can take into account. You can still can consider whether or not you think the, the design is acceptable, you know, you, you may prefer the previous design, you know, and, and that's ultimately the, the decision before you, but that is why this is a scheme that we are otherwise recommending approval for, which, you know, by the council's location plan and strategy, we, we wouldn't normally. And, and did you look at the urban design guide when, when looking at what was going to be developed? Uh, my apologies, uh, not myself personally, but I'm sure the, the case officer has, uh, has considered that. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rowley. Ch Chairman, are we in open debate now, or are we still questioning? The... Sorry, well, to, technically speaking, we're still on questions, although some of the questions have tended to drift <laughs> slightly away. But no, we're, we're strictly speaking, we're still on questions. Okay, well, can, can I then come in when it's open debate? Yeah, Bef before, before we um, go further, I actually have one question for, the, for, for you, Nick. Could you just confirm that given the position we're in, where we've got an out-of-date local plan and no five-year housing land supply, any application like this goes straight into the tilt of balance uh, and it's a straightforward case. Do, do the benefits outweigh the disbenefits? And if, the, if they do, then it has to, we have to approve it. That's my perception. I may be oversimplifying things, but I think that's, that's broadly the way it is. Is that right, Nick? I would say that's a very good summary, Chair. I mean, it, it's part of the considerations, yes. You know, the, I think the officer has, in on page 253, set out again the council's five-year supply because it, it is a relevant consideration and, it, to be honest, it will be for the vast majority of your residential developments over the next foreseeable months until that position. So it, it is kind of a combination, which, again, uh, back to Councillor Ayer's comments, it, it's a bit of both. It's, it's, A, there's a fallback, but you're absolutely right. It's the tilted balance that is engaged by... Uh, by the lack of supply, I suppose the landscape, the significant and demonstrable harm balance, it, I suppose, is, is slightly different in this case. It would be a different kettle of fish if this was a greenfield site, that there's, there's nothing else there. But this is slightly different because obviously you have got a scheme as a fallback that if you refuse this today, you will have a barn, you will have... Excuse me, get to it. That, you will have that. So again, <clears throat> I think in terms of the differentiation between the, that, the harm that will be caused, the fact there's a structure there, is, is slightly different, but it, it's yeah, a very good I mean, solution. I mean, that, that would go into the benefits basket, wouldn't it? The fact you're getting a betterment, you're getting a better product than what the class Q gives us. Officers so that, certainly that's of that, that opinion. That goes in the betterment side of the scales. Yeah, yeah, officers are certainly of that opinion, but I guess that's the that's the decision before you all today, members. I think if there are no more questions, um, we'll move on to debate. So, uh, Councillor Rowley, you want to... Uh, yes, please, Chairman. Um, I'm just looking at this quite simplistically, and we've almost been rehearsing what I was going to say in that uh, two-way conversation there. I think what we have um, consented at the moment, and this is my opinion, I think we've got a bit of a dog's dinner there in terms of those sheds for five dwellings. It doesn't look very good in my view. I think that's the problem with Class Q. It seems to cover so many different types of barns, but I think in this situation. Um, I think the scheme before us is better than that that is behind you, Chairman. Um, I think we've got an opportunity here of having something better. I do quite like the courtyard. I know um, Councillor Thomas uh, said that the courtyard thing expanded the overall footprint of the development, but actually I, pre I think I prefer that than converting those large barns into five dwellings. I think, I think that's awful. I think we've got something better here. I don't like some of the materials, but I do know that there is a condition on there which requires submission of materials. Um, I, I would prefer to see something a little bit softer than uh, some of the materials that, that, that are shown, for example, the roof. I think there's an opportunity here of making something much better uh, than there. But there is a condition on there, so I'd be happy with that. Um, Chairman, I, I'm, I'm going to support this development because whilst generally... I don't like Class Q, I don't like PIPs, there's many things in planning that I, I don't like now, but I, th I think in this instance, I don't always like the fallback position, but in this instance, I think we've got betterment, in my view. So I'm going to support it, and I'm going to move 
uh, approval in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Chair. I'm agreeing with a lot of what you have said and what uh, Councillor Rowley has said, but I don't think it is as much betterment as we could get on this site. I don't like the design um, at all. Uh, I don't think it fits in with the Evesham um, urban design area, and so I would like to see it deferred for better design, if that um, is possible, because that is I'm a material condition. I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll take counsel on that, but generally speaking, the general rule is you have to consider what's in front of you, not what might be in front of you in an idea in, you, in a utopian I situation. Like to, I, do, I think then the tilted balance is tilted even further against because of the design of the, um, the properties. I'm going to take Councillor Kieran, was that, or, or Dawn, is that, can we defer to get a better design or do we have to consider what's on the table in front of us? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's um, really, we, we're tasked with um, determining what's in front of us. I know sometimes if members are minding to refuse something, but they think that uh, an, an amendment could address their concerns, then they do sometimes take a, that pragmatic approach um, to try and go back to the applicant. But of course, we need to, um, that really, we don't know whether we've got that sort of buy-in or whether the applicant wants us to determine that this in this case. Um, but I think we, we certainly need to kind of, I think it, at the minute, we don't have a, a recommendation. You could, you could certainly put that on the table, but I think um, we, we've... You know, in, in terms, there'd have to be quite good reason. If members, like I say, were, were trying to find a pragmatic way forward, and I know we've done that in the past, but I think here it's for in, certainly an officer's view in terms of what the looking at the scheme as a whole, um, looking at the um, fallback position and what we've got in front of us, we do think that it leans more in favour. But of course, you're entitled to your view on that um, as well. Okay, thank you, Kieran. Um, yeah, I have Councillor Adams and then Councillor Mrs. Rowley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr Chairman, I, I think we got there when Councillor Rowley spoke, and I, I'm right behind his comments, so I think you're short of a seconder for the proposal. Uh, then I'm second, happy yeah. to second. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Mrs Rowley. Well, this seems to make a nonsense of the Class Q, Q uh, con consented building. I mean, that's, that's policy, isn't it? I mean, we're going completely yeah, you're, you're, rubbishing you're, you're, our policy. You're, you're, you're it absolutely because there isn't a five-year land supply. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. But that we are, and we've had, we've had quite a few cases where people have come with a Class Q conversion, said they want to knock down and start again, and they won it either, either at this committee or at appeal. Um, so, yes, you're, that, that's right, but that's, that's the rules at the moment. Are there any more speakers? No, in which case it's proposed and seconded for approval. So, Dawn, I'll ask you to take a vote on it, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the uh, motion has been moved and seconded to approve as per the officer recommendation. Uh, those all in favour, please raise your cards now. Three, four. Uh, those against? Five, any abstentions? Three, abs ah. Councillor Darby, you didn't actually come in and hear the whole debate on this application. Well, I'll, I'll leave you completely out of that if you don't mind. It's those who are actually able to, to take part in the vote. So it's two abs abstentions. That motion to approve has fallen, Chair. Yeah, yeah. We, we've now got to look, because that was defeated, we've now got to look for a proposal to refuse. Uh, or, some, or some alternative. Right, members, that, the motion to approve has been lost. You have no motion on the table at this point in time. That means you therefore have two choices. You may either refuse the application or defer. Bearing in mind that both are against officer recommendation you will need to have reasons policy reasons and planning reasons for uh, going against officer recommendation therefore we need a, a, a move a motion at the mover and a seconder for uh, whichever way you decide you want to go 
I wanted to defer because of the material condition design, particularly the metal roofs. Um, the nearest properties have all got uh, red tile roofs. Um, and, and so that is why I wanted to refuse it. So I think that is a material condition design. Uh, are you proposing either deferment or refusal? A deferment of, of, because of design. I think I'm just wondering if, if it is specifically about the materials, that is something we could actually potentially condition that they have to be specific, that they can't be, if it is just about the roofing material, if it's wider than that, um, then obviously it may need to go away and be redesigned. So I've just wanted to check whether that, whether that was an option. You can do it on the hoof, sitting at a committee. I think it, somebody needs to really look at that design and turn it into something that is suitable for the area if you're going to turn this into uh, housing. Yeah, I, th I think it, it was from just because you, you specifically mentioned the the roofing material, so that's why I, I was just wondering if that was the specific, if there was a specific. It's wider than that. Um, the, there is um, there is potential um, other alternatives such as. Um, we could, we could go away and bring it back to this committee, or you, you could um, uh, delegate authority in, in consultation. Um, so there's a few options to you if you wanted to make a motion, or you might want to come back to committee to be debated. Um, I'm just sort of mentioning those, depending on how you'd prefer it to be dealt with. Prefer it to come back to committee. Mm. Um, well, perhaps we ought to just examine that a bit further. Uh, Council Mrs. Eyre has suggested deferment. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very tempted to observe that uh, of all the members who voted refusal, I don't think any member had actually spoken, therefore, to disclose what their reasons for refusal might be. I don't know if anybody's prepared to actually uh, <laughs> enlighten us slightly as to why they voted that way, and then that might give us a clue as to how best to proceed. Councillor Dyke, Councillor Mrs. Smith, you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. My, my, um, my reasons were, as, as others have said, the, the design I don't like. You know, we have been pushing design in Whipshaven uh, for a long, long time now. We've got officers coming on board, we've taken on a company to try and give us a policy on design. Um, and to put this before us, I don't think is adequate. Um, you could see them maybe on the roof, but that's not, that wouldn't do much for this. I don't like the designs of the building. I think they're, um, they're almost like office blocks, especially with the courtyard in the middle. I don't know quite whose idea that was, but it, it, you know, if they're, in, they're individual houses, and yet they are not individual houses in the courtyard aspect of it. So that was, that's my concern. I don't like the design and I don't like the courtyard. Thank you, Councillor Dyke. Councillor Mrs Smith, I think you put your hand up. My reasons are exactly the same as Councillor Dyke. I don't like the design. Um, it's in the wrong place. It just doesn't fit where they want to put it, and it, it will look dreadful. So, you know, I can't see why we can't go back and get a better design. Mm. Uh, and as, as Councillor Dyke said, that's what we've been trying to do. Um, as a council, we need better design properties. So that's my reasons. Okay, thank you very much. And could I ask, are you in favour of complete refusal or deferral um, to seek a better design? I'm quite happy for deferral for a better design to come back to another meeting. Yeah, me too. Chair, can I just interject, if you don't mind? At the moment, uh, Councillor Mrs. Eyre has actually moved for deferment. Have we got a seconder for that? It's for deferral, not refusal based on, on the design and potential... Yeah. Yes, we, Councillor Dyke has indicated he's prepared to... Uh, um, Nick, Nick, do you want to speak? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I think ultimately, members, if you, if you do decide to defer for design, that you know, is within, within your gift to do. Could I, just for the purposes of, so, as officers, so we know kind of if we are liaising and negotiating with the, the applicant, what specifically we'd like to see, because what I wouldn't want us to do is kind of go away, get the design altered, it come back, and it's still not really be in keeping with kind of what you are what you are looking for. You know, again, you, you're referring to things like the metal roof. I, I fully appreciate what you're saying. You know, things like that, just be mindful of, if you refuse this today and the barn was converted, you would get a metal roof. So I just think we just need to be very, very clear before we 
take up more time with the applicants and being reasonable to them, what specific elements you'd like to see? Is it the footprint? Is it the layout? Is it the materials? If I think the wisest thing would be to engage very briefly the urban designers who know they've done it so many times before we've deferred and what has come back has been so much better. And if the urban designers were to come back satisfied with the current scheme, would that be something that would give you more confidence? I'd fall over. I, I don't ask that facetiously. It's just like I say, if, if we are going to defer it, to, you know, we have to be very clear in, in our ask. The if reason we want, I wanted want deferral to... is because there are many reasons which Counter Rowley and, uh, has, has uh, articulated and did the chairman. So I think we are in a hard place, but we can do much better uh, in terms of the location to create the sense of place that this... If we're going to go in this direction, it is quite different to have a barn with a metal roof in that way. But if we're going to go in this, if we're going to improve this area and have betterment, let's have betterment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Do you want to come back again, Nick? No, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying at all. And, and I'm not being facetious in asking these questions. Like I say, if we were, if, if as officers, when we receive an application, if we say to an applicant, you need to amend your scheme. What we don't do is to say, you need to amend it over to you. We, we are very specific about, can you reduce the ridge height? Can you change the window openings, different materials? So that essentially that is what we will be doing by this decision. Yeah, so I just perhaps want to make... give the applicant the urban design guide for Evesham. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think um, I, I'm, I'm a little a little concerned, I suppose, that we will end up amending a scheme and, and potentially not addressing these the concerns because they do seem quite wide ranging. And I think if you've got very, very strong design concerns, um, you, you have to be, you know, it, it, sometimes it is the right right thing to re, to refuse something if if you do feel strongly enough. If um, you, what what we're doing here, obviously, we, we're looking to try and. Um, look for a solution to move forward which is obviously pragmatic and, and positive working which we, we we obviously welcome but at, at the same time it's it's very it will be very difficult to nail down exactly what we're trying to achieve here and we could well be um, amending a scheme or tr attempting to amend a scheme and bringing something back that members still still don't like and it's you know we, we're tasked really with um with decided the application in, in front of us if there's very clear amendments that we need to seek then that's one thing but actually trying to do a whole redesign of a scheme is in quite dangerous territory i think so i'm just i'm not saying you can't do that but like i say it comes with quite a risk of us taking away why not why not link it to the local member and the design champion for Witchhaven? and mm. then with the design champion for Witchhaven, the local member the, the urban design guide for evesham um with a tiny bit of input from the urban designers i think we'll get there so, so um, the the defer or delegation with no, deferral, deferral, but, but involved, like we did with Shadow Wind Billing. Yeah, exactly that. But we this yeah that was that was indeed a recommended. But that that was on the um, obviously Shadow Impney was recommended. Well, members had not were minded to approve that, so there was that certainty to move to a design review on that. Yeah. Here, there's no certainty that the applicants going to you know we're going to go away potentially ask for some amendments on various bits and try and try and address some of the members concerns but there's no certainty that they're going to end up with an approval at the end of that process either so i'm just quite mindful of that um you know and it, it does be it does depend on the the members you know how strongly they feel about the 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 design aspect but it, but clearly members have voted against approval of that so it's not something that members are able to support um so you know currently it's unacceptable um, from, from based based on that vote, um, going away and amending the scheme, like I say, if it's if it's tweaks to it, that's quite clear for for officers. You know, if it was the, I mean, that's why I asked about the the roofing material. And but if we're talking quite a significant redesign, it, it is almost starting again and keeping an application live, which again isn't necessarily the the easiest way to to, to ma manage something either. Um, and like I say, without the certainty that it's going to address the members' concerns, so I'm just. Um, you know, again, I'll be led. It's, it's, it's members' decision, but I just I think it just needed to, you know, a bit of a warning there about where we may head, um, because I, I really don't want to be coming back here with a with a scheme that doesn't necessarily still satisfy members, um, and you know, and we we, you know, we we could end up still where we are, but some months on, um, and that hasn't given the you know we haven't actually determined the application. I see oh, the complication you. of what you're saying. 
Um, but I think you have to, if, it, and design is a very subjective thing, which is why you have to use the evidence of the urban design guide, the draft urban design guide for this area. And I think that is your, that gives you some certainty of the direction of travel. But I can't pick out individual things at this moment in time, sitting in a meeting like this without it in front of me. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mrs Smith. Thank you, Chairman. Can I refer members to 7.1.3 on page 252, right at the top? And it says, and I quote, the proposed development would fail to accord with the provisions of policy SWDP2 Part C. The proposed development would go against the SWDP development strategy and the principles it is based upon. In that, it would not safeguard or enhance the open countryside contrary to the provisions of the South Worcestershire Development Plan. I mean, what can be clearer than that? We're trying to get a decent design, and this doesn't give us, give us that. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I think, Councillor Miller. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to help or hinder here, Chairman, but uh, um, the, the agent obviously realises the thoughts and the wishes of the committee here, and there must be a way forward. Is there any avenue for the agent to uh, withdraw this at this stage and come back uh, without um, w without this plan being determined at this point? Well, it's, it's always up to an applicant to withdraw, but I'm not sure that I could see actually any benefit. I'm not sure that would take us any further forward. Well, it may be a benefit to the agent, or we or we plain. I, I put I put a, a refusal in. Uh, reason and on the basis of design so you've got a set refusal the applicant has the right to come back for a second bite of the cherry and that may be the best way forward without it remaining as a live application oh i'll ask the question Nick. I, yeah I, I mean you, you could do that um i, I think probably the the better option for myself and, and feel free to disagree it's kind of what kieran's really been saying which is we, we, we don't mind kind of going back to the applicant and being very specific saying this scheme as currently proposed is is not acceptable it's just in doing that it's just being very specific about it and, and, I, and it's a, I know it's a very difficult thing to, to answer council arrears but you know we <clears throat> but we have to do that as officers you know if we just say to an applicant I don't like your scheme you need to change it that that wouldn't hold up an appeal you know we have to be specific about which elements I don't, I mean, you could refuse the application. Yes, they could resubmit. If, if I was the agent, I'd probably run an appeal alongside of it anyway, <clears throat> um, and, and sort of hedge my bets. Uh, there's a number of options available to you. Um, deferral is one, but I think it's with a very specific ask. I think, as Kieran said, we don't want this application still being on the books for months and months and months, because it doesn't give certainty to the applicant in, in defence to them, and it doesn't help us progress the application. Uh, and just one last kind of, Point, uh, apologies, Councillor at the back, I can't, can't see your name. I, I hear what you're saying about SWD2, but just to be clear, that, that talks about the locational strategy, is in the geographical location, rather than actual being designed itself. So that, that doesn't give us anything more specific other than geographically, it's not somewhere that we would support on the local plan, but we accept that already. It's, it's sort of the fallback and the class queue is the reason why we're going for this. Uh, thank you, Chair. Is it helpful to say that We'd like the applicant to go back and look at the design and evidence how it reflects, that the applicant has to evidence how it reflects the draft urban design um, for this particular area of Evesham and in particular address the issue of the metal roof, which is not, which is agricultural, but not really a home you know, sort of tiles are better for a roof. So the, the roof is addressed and then other aspects are addressed but, and, they, and they cross evidence to the Urban Design Guide to show that they have... Because then they're evidencing that they have actually met our needs and created the sense of place. So essentially we'll be kind of changing the roof, which is very specific. We, we, that's a point that we can sort of pick up with them. <clears throat> but actually maybe asking for the... App but perhaps asking the applicant for a bit of sort of justification around why they've chosen some of the design styles. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I don't think we should work with detail here. I think we've got to a position where we, we know we've got to way forward. Um, Yeah, I think so. So currently, the the proposal um, on the on the table was to, for deferral to to have a have a look at the design and potentially re, re, redesign. And and I think the dif the difficulty we have is that it does seem that the amendments proposed and being talked about are quite are more significant than just small amendments to a scheme. They are likely to be a, a quite, you know, redraw and restart again, like I mentioned before. And I think in that case, it, it is really difficult to defer and for officers to go away and get a brand new scheme starting from scratch. Um, that may, like I said, like I mentioned, may still not get the support of, of members at, at this committee because it, it really, it, it could look very different and it might, it might be very different and members still might not be happy with it. Um, especially, um, I think some of the some of the comments made were to do with the um, courtyard and scale of it, which some some members liked and some didn't. But the fact that it's it is um, sort of pulling the development further apart, so they, it takes up a, a greater in in, vis, in a visual sense, it, it it doesn't take any greater footprint, but it's more spread out, so you potentially see it more. And I think that's something that the local um, ward member mentioned as well in in their representation. Um, so I mean, for, from our perspective, we. You know, I'm just from from an office perspective to go away and try and um, get get a scheme um, to get amendments to a scheme is one thing, but to get it's the, what we're talking about, I don't think are amendments. I think it's a brand new. I'm scheme. asking for amendments to the scheme. Okay. I'm asking for the roof to be done in a, a better material, a material which is betterment, which fits with the uh, surroundings and. Uh, sufficient changes to make it fit with the sense of place. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think I think that's that's the. And I know you probably mentioned like subjective um, design, of course. You know, like I said, we we can we can rework the the uh, roofing material potentially. We can look at materials of the whole pallet on on the site. Um, but actually, I, I, you know exactly what it, what the amendments mean. Are quite it's quite difficult for, like I say, officers to. You have to forgive me because it was my understanding that from top to bottom, once we had we spent this enormous amount of money on having urban design statements, uh, and, and from top to bottom, every single officer would think design and push design and get compliance with design. The design that we've spent all the money putting on paper. Um, I heard Councillor Dyke first and Councillor Tony Rowe. Well, thank you, Chairman. I was just going to say that the local member here um, is probably um, the most important... Um, difficult to say, but he, he is the one who, you, he, who is mostly pushing on design. It's been his ideas that we should have a better design in Witchhaven, and it's quite fortuitous that, we, that he is the local member because he can come up with his own particular recommendations. Plus, we have experts in, which, uh, in the building here who know about urban design. Plus, we've had um, report after report, as, as Liz has said. So I, I don't think it's unreasonable to defer this so the local member and the uh, specific officers that are concerned with design should be able to look at this and come back particularly the local member thank you councillor Knight. councillor Rowley, you wanted to come back and then, then i think we're going to move to a vote yeah I, I think we're in danger of making ourselves a laughing stock here to be quite honest um we, we, if we're talking about roofs it's almost a condition aid with the agents here hearing about what we could deal with that as part of what the recommendation is 
uh, condition eight requires submission of type, color, texture, size of brakes, precise specification, proposed external cladding, including stain paint colors and roofing materials. That, in terms of a condition, it's there if, if that's what we're looking at. We don't like the, I can't remember what we called it, the, 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 the metal uh, seamed roof thing, then, you know, we, 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 we go back. We don't have to defer this for, for that reason. And I, I, I think we're in danger as well as getting everybody involved with trying to design this without looking what is in front of us. And what is in front of us, to me, is far better than the, the fallback position, which, is, which are those barns. Now, that would look terrible, in my view. So I, I, I think we should look at this again as a potential appro approval. Sort it out by condition. If, if what we're looking at is roofing and roof materials, let's do it by condition. Strengthen up the condition if necessary and say that's exactly what we want. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Councillor Sen. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, if you look at page 263, the bottom of uh, number eight, surely this covers what we've been talking about for the last half hour, um, if everybody cares to read it. On page 263. Number eight. Okay, um, I hear what you say, Councillor Oli, about I think you're in favour of having another go at approval, but unfortunately for that, for that, for that uh, idea, we've actually got um, a proposer and a seconder on the table for deferment, so we'll have to take, we'll have to on that one first. Um, and if, if that vote were to be lost, then I guess we could go back, as you suggest. But as we sit here, I think our next move has to be a vote on, on deferment. De deferment to what? To do what? Just to, to seek a better design, I think, is a, in line with various comments. Yeah, that's that's the that's the proposal, uh, Tony. That, uh... Yeah, well, I uh, voted uh, for abstain before because I I was not happy with development in the open countryside. But if we are going to have to have this development, I actually prefer the scheme that is before us than any other um, proposal that we've heard because it retains the courtyard appearance and it does retain something of the appearance of a farmyard. So I will therefore support the idea of uh, approval. Okay, okay, thank you. But as I say, we, we will have to proceed. It tells us we have to do the vote on deferment first. Uh, so I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll do that we'll do that first, and then if that fails, uh, we'll then have another go at approval. I think. But, uh, so Dawn, can you take a vote on? Um, Thank you, Chair. At the moment, you have a motion on the table um, and motion moved and seconded to defer the application uh, for the applicant to liaise with the uh, officers on the design of the uh, application, the development before you. <sighs> Councillor, you moved that motion. Are you happy for that? I appreciate Councillor Dyke, you seconded, but it's... It... So, who, who is it you want to add to that? Because I need to have it down as a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll read that one out again. We have a motion on the table to defer. It's been moved and seconded on the grounds of design, but obviously that the to go back and liaise the applicant to liaise with the officers in conjunction with the... Design. design champion and local ward member. And who's the design champion? The person who's designated as a design champion. 
Okay. Those in favour of deferring, please raise your cards. Three. Those against. Seven. Any abstentions? None. That motion is lost. There is nothing on the table. Therefore, we need a further motion. Mr. Rowley. I'm going to go move for approval and um, subject to conditions and a strengthening of condition eight uh, to suggest that we look at a tiled roof rather than the seamed metal roof or Thank something you. to that effect, Wor wording that uh, the case office can put forward. So, Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Councillor Adams, you seconded it last time. Are you prepared to second it again? I'm very happy to, because I've made a note on here, don't forget to put the clocks forward when you get home. So. OK, so no more speakers, so we'll have another go at approval. So, Dawn, can you take another vote on approval, please? Just in clarification, Councillor Rowley, obviously you said um, the, the move and second is, is in accordance with officer recommendation. Uh, you mentioned about subject to um, strengthening condition eight. Um, would you rather give the officers delegated authority to amend that condition eight? Yes. Thank you very much for the clarification. Therefore, we have a motion to move um, as per the officer recommendation those in favour, please raise your voting cards. Eight. Those against? Two. Any abstentions? Thank you. That motion is carried. OK, thank you. Sorry, yes, I've, I've been reminded we've been going for an hour and a half and that perhaps a five-minute five break might be just for people to stretch their legs might be appreciated.
Okay. Um, right, I think we're all back, so we'll resume. Uh, and we're up to item 10, which is uh, land at uh, Church Lane, Norton, Worcester. Councillor Darby, I think you were going to declare an interest. Well, I just wanted, to, uh, because I wasn't here at the beginning, uh, to uh, declare an interest in not this item, but the next one, and uh, to say that I will leave at the end of this item. Okay, yeah, thank you, Councillor Darby. Okay, um, so we have some speakers on this item. Uh, Councillor Martin Pollard. Yes, Councillor Pollard, could you come forward and sit in the seat over there marked uh, Parish Council? And uh, yeah, Mr Addison, uh, if you could come forward and... Uh, and sit in the supporter's seat. Okay, so, well, welcome to Planning Committee, both of you. Um, I think, Councillor Pollard, you were here for the earlier items, so you've seen the way it all works, so you don't need me to go through the process again, I don't think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and, David, I know you're well used to the uh, <laughs> procedure. Okay, jolly good. Right, so, Gemma, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the item number 10 here is for a planning in principle um, and it should be for up to four new dwellings. And it is situated on land off Church Lane in Norton. And here is the location plan. The application has been put in through the uh, permission in principle process. It's a two part process with the first um, strictly assessing only three key issues being location land use and the amount of development there will then be a second uh, stage which will be the technical details consent uh, this is the aerial photography of the site and this is the development plan boundaries with the application site uh, the two respective neighbourhood development boundaries and the big red line, um, the big sorry, black line as well, actually, is the uh, site allocation boundary. For clarification, the site is in a development boundary. And that just shows the significant gap. Thank you, Chair. Great, thank you very much, Gemma. Okay, so, um, Councillor, Councillor Pollard, you have three, three minutes. Okay. Uh, to keep things brief, I'd like to concentrate on three major errors that are in the uh, Planning Committee report. And I just showed one up on the, on the screen there. The first one uh, uh, being SWD policy 45.1. Although the site is in the development boundary, it fails to show on that plan that 60% is actually in the significant gap. So that, that shows on... I've actually blown it up and it shows it there, but I can't submit documents. But 60% of that site is in the significant gap. So that's a mistake. Second, on uh, locational uh, sustainability. We don't believe it can demonstrate local sustainability and meet the requirements of uh, SWD P4. It's a de deprivation page from the Witchhaven produced parish profile. Uh, we're in the bottom 10% of deprivation in the parish profile for barriers to housing and services. And I quote, for barriers to housing and services, the reason for the poor scores for the both areas was the proximity to a primary school, general store, GP surgery, post office and dentist. And on top of that, 99% of the journeys from this location are by car or van. Paragraph three in this section is also incorrect. There aren't any bus stops on Woodbury Lane, nor are there any public bus services in the entire parish. So that is wrong. And the station is not one mile away, it's one and a half miles away. It's a 30 minute walk. And if you've been along that road, it's unlit, narrow, busy, mostly without footpaths and definitely not safe as a walking route. Lastly, it has already been brought up about Sedgeborough and the five year land, uh, land supply. We believe this has been misinterpreted in regards to government guidelines 
were quoted paragraph 97. Uh, paragraph 83, by the way, is ignored, which completely uh, answers the question, how should planning applications be decided, whether there is a neighbourhood planning force, but the local planning authority cannot demonstrate a five-year supply of deliverable housing sites. The last sentence of that paragraph is, the MPPF also states that where a planning application conflicts with an up-to-date neighbourhood plan as part of the development plan, permission should not usually be granted. That's what all I've got to say today. OK, thank, thank you very much, um, Councillor Pollard. Uh, OK, um, Mr Addison, you have some... Thank you. Afternoon, members, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Uh, the submission before you is a permission in principle. The only matters for consideration are the location of the site, the land use and the amount of development. The site lies within the adopted Worcester South Urban Extension Allocation, as defined under policy SWDP 45 uh, forward slash 1. Therefore, the site lies within the defined development boundary in fully accords with policy SWDP 2. The Norton Juxta Kempsey Neighbourhood Plan was adopted after the SWDP in 2021. A portion of the urban extension site falls within the neighbourhood plan boundary. The neighbourhood plan does not seek to prevent development coming forward as part of that urban extension. The site in front of you today is wholly within the urban extension allocation. The neighbourhood plan cannot supersede or override the adopted local plan policy. The principle of locating residential development on the site is wholly in accordance with the adopted SWDP. As the site lies within the adopted urban extension boundary, the site is also considered locationally sustainable. The site adjoins existing residential development and therefore being appropriate land use. The density of the development will also reflect the characteristics of the surrounding built environment. The proposals would represent an appropriate location, land use and amount of development. Uh, it is appreciated that the site could be subject to potential noise nuisance due to the proximity of the M5. However, the permission and principal application does not allow for this matter to be considered at this stage. This will be dealt with as part of the uh, technical details submission. A specialist noise consultant would be used to assess the site before any technical detail submission is made. The proposal will generate benefits with regards to supporting the council's housing land supply, which in turn boosts the local economy through construction industry and support for local services and facilities. These benefits should also be given due weight. On the basis of the permission and principle legislation, there are no grounds to object to this proposal as set out in the committee report. We respectfully request that you support your officer's recommendation to approve today. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Mr Anderson. Um, Councillor Adams, you're the local member. Do you have any questions for either of our speakers? No, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Does any other committee member have any questions for any of our speakers? Councillor Miller and Councillor Dobb. Yes, um, question for David Addison. Uh, David, w with this one, has a, an assessment of the air quality been taken into account in location with the M5? Through you, Chair. Um, as with the the noise issue and a number of, another of, uh, number of other issues, um, that would form part of the technical detail stage. Um, so the permission in principle just focuses on those three key elements um, as, the, as the planning officer set out. Other matters come forward under the technical detail stage. So that would fall under the te technical details uh, stage after the, which is the second stage of this uh, type of application process. Thank you, Councillor Darby. This is also Mr. Addison. Uh, were you asked for uh, a biodiversity assessment because uh, this site, uh, according to Natural England, uh, contains a Section 41 habitat uh, of, um, uh, and therefore uh, conflicts with uh, SWDP um, 22, Section D? And through you, Chair. Um, no, I'm not aware that uh, we've been asked for an ecological survey. Again, that um, with permission in principal applications, typically an uh, ecological survey would again fall under the uh, remit under the technical detail stage. Uh, are you aware that that would not be the case in an, with an orchard? Because uh, the whole site, it's not that there's a feature, it's the whole site is designated by Natural England as being a traditional orchard which falls under this category. Uh, and therefore, no building would be possible on this site uh, without destroying that. 
So it, I think that the principle, it must, it must be a matter for the principle at this stage. Okay. Um, do you want to come back on that, Mr. Edison? Um, <clears throat> as I said, the, the, the permission in principle legislation is very clear that it's only location, land use and amount of development that's up for consideration. Um, other matters are, are dealt with at technical detail stage um, and it could come out at a technical detail stage that a site isn't developable. So planning permission could be granted for a particular site um, but there may be some particular issue whether that's drainage, highways, ecology, noise, air pollution, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, that means that actually that uh, what's been granted under the permission principle isn't deliverable on that site. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any further questions from yeah, Councillor Rowley. Uh, th th thank you, Chairman. Again, it's a question aimed at uh, David Addison, but I'll also aim it at the planning officer as well when, when the time comes. I have difficulties with PIP applications, I have to say. And one of the items... David's quite right, you know, location, land use, and amount of development. But in terms of, of the point about location, if the location is next to something that's creating a problem, is that not a reason that you shouldn't, or you could take into account? What, what does it mean, just location on its own? If it's, if it's rather like the ecology question that Adrian's just asked, if the, if the location impacts upon something, surely that's a comment that you could make. Okay. Um, I, 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 I'm posing the question because I'm confused on that. Yeah, yeah. Location. No, I, th I think, okay, but I think it's, that's more a question for officers than for speakers, I think. However, um, I'm quite happy to put it to officers if they're prepared to, I don't know, I don't know whether Kieran or, or Nick, are you in a position to answer that? The, the, I think the point that's been made is if we are considering location, then shouldn't factors which are essentially a function of location, like is it an orchard, is it next door to a motorway, uh, or whatever, uh, sh should be taken account of in assessing the location, because you can't change them at technical detail stage. I think that's, that's the point that's being, being raised. So, Nick, are you able to... Well, well ch Chairman, I, I, I really wanted the view of the, <laughs> the applicant's agent and then the view of the planning officer. OK, so yes, no, you're perfectly entitled. David, can I ask you to give a view on, on, on that question, that point? I can certainly try. Um, and I say, with regards to the location of the site, I think it's very much the, the principle of having residential development on that site. Now, there are, as you say, other matters uh, like ecology, noise and highways, which could mean that that having residential de on development on that site potentially is turns out not to be acceptable but that's not a definitive yes or no um so with regards to highways it's not known at this time whether or not um there is a development could be brought forward on that site for between two and four dwellings that would meet highway safety um uh, legislation similarly um, uh, a specific site specific ecological survey uh, might rule out uh, residential development on on all of the site or one part of the site but because they are not uh, as I say definitive in terms of whether the principle of the development is acceptable it's very much the principle of having residential development um, is what's being considered under the location of the site rather than other factors which may well um, mean there is may well affect the principle but they're not known at this time because um, that's more of a, a, a technical detail stage but yeah obviously hopefully officers will will be able to confirm okay th thank you David can we put the same question to officers do you Um, I mean, yes, I sort of broadly agree with a, a lot of what the uh, speaker said. I mean, <clears throat> in terms of location, I, I tend to sort of view that 
personally, in my experience, has been more of a sort of geographical question. If this was a, a field in the middle of the open countryside or in the side of the hills, you'd probably say locationally, that is not somewhere that we would support development. There's nothing to say that you can't build on a site with an orchard. <clears throat> There's nothing to say that you can't build to the side of a, of a motorway. It's, it's probably highly unlikely in this case that the motorway would not result in, in a level of noise that would probably be undeliverable. But the question is not at that stage. The question is almost geographically, is this in a spot? Is it in a development limit? Is it in the neighbourhood plan area? Is it not? Is it open countryside? That's what we consider when it, in terms of the, the locational question. And then other issues would then be sort of considered at the, uh, at the technical detail stage. Because I, I agree about, like I say, the orchard, but for what we know, you could, you could build on that orchard and there could be appropriate mitigation there could be sort of replacement plantings, but that's that's taking it a step further than the legislation allows us to, to do. And actually, it's taking it a step further in terms of asking for a noise assessment at this stage, in terms of asking for an ecological assessment at this stage. The legislation for this type of application doesn't really kind of give us that, that remit to go back. It is almost a case of, like I say, geography, yes, no. I don't know if that answers your question at all, or any clearer, uh, Councillor. Okay, it, thank you. It, it, it an answers the question, but I'm even more confused than I was before. So, <laughs> I, I just just to uh, just to add to the point, really, I suppose the the um, permission in principle isn't when the planning permission is granted either. So, the planning permission in this case, unlike an outline where you get planning permission at the outline stage, you don't actually get a planning permission as such until the technical detail consent. Partly for this reason, because there isn't a lot of detail up front, and it is very um, high level. I suppose is the best way to put it. Um, and we are dealing with 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 that sort of high level um, principle at that point. But it it could end up that we we don't end up supporting the technical detail consent, which then effectively means that planning permission is never granted on that site, even though there's a permission in principle that was granted. So it doesn't meet that second stage. Okay. So thank you. So, uh, Councillor Dyke, we're still on questions. So, if there are no more questions for either speaker, uh, we'll move to the debate. And Councillor Adams, as a local member, you may you may wish to speak first. Or... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, well, I want to say thank you to you for allowing me to call a site visit here. I, I've been trying to remember the last time I called a site visit, but it would be between 12 and 15 years ago, at least. Anyway. I don't like calling site visits, but then not very often do you find when we're trying to build very close to a motorway like that. So it was justified, I think, in my mind. I don't think this application is any different to any others. And we've seen we've got three choices, haven't we, to, to approve, uh, or refuse, or, or uh, defer. Well, we've heard enough of deferment today. Having said that, my parish council there at Norton uh, are extremely upset uh, regarding this and they would like to see it deferred because um, they are not happy with uh, the neighbourhood boundary compared with the other boundary. That's what they think. I personally think we could um, resolve this application this afternoon and determine this, after, this application this afternoon and to me, there's only one way forward, and that is to refuse it at this stage, whether we're allowed to do it or not. Common sense says you should do that, but there isn't a policy for common sense, is there? <laughs> Gemma's made a good report here, and it was quite educational for me, just to remind myself what we can do and what we can't do at this stage of an application. And there are three elements there that we have to uh, discuss, really, you know, not what the weather's going to be tomorrow or anything like that. You know, location, land use, uh, and amount of development. So let me just deal with location first. And why I filled in that form, simple as I am, it was all about the proximity to the motorway. Uh, there, and at this, when I uh, put in uh, for a, a site visit, there was some over the neighborhood uh, boundary came to and then it's been discussed and if you're not sure ask Gemma she will fill you in on why it brings in uh, the other development down the road and the other development down the road is for 2,600 houses 2,600 houses I wouldn't say it's half a mile away it might be three quarters of a mile away not very far down the road although I can't use it today 
we have the South Worcestershire Development Plan review of 5,000, maybe 10,000 houses going the other way opposite the Parkway Station. And, and you all know that I've supported that all the way through because I don't want, as I said in our last meeting, I don't want us building and pushing our villages and towns out any more than they have. We go for a new development. I don't like the numbers. You know, anybody would be frightened of the numbers. You're talking about dropping Droitwich into that area, the size of Droitwich. But however, that's not very far away. The one hasn't been decided, the other's being built out now. So do we actually need to go building so close to a motorway? It just doesn't make sense to me. However, so the location there, so the proximity to the, to the motorway, the air quality, noise, um, you know, and, and Gemma said, you, you could o overcome that. You know, in her reports, you know, by altering your windows and that sort of thing, I still believe people like to sit outside in their gardens, but perhaps that's the way they could get out of it. I don't know. And, and there again, what have we got in amenities there? There's no library, no shops, although we have a very good uh, garden centre, um, half a mile away or so, St Peter's Garden Centre. You know, no... Well, there is a bus service. Norton Connect, the parish put together, supported... Uh, by the district council here, £30,000, I think that's right. Uh, Martin's nodding, so it's got to be right, uh, into there to do, you know, a limited service there. And it runs well, you have to book in and all the rest, and that can, connects to the Parkway station. The act, act, active travel corridor, which comes over St. From St Peter's, over there, is nothing but a joke. They did the bridge over from St. Peter's, that end, you can get off the Woodbury Lane uh, in, into the Parkway Station, that end, they've done both ends, and in the middle for years, we haven't got it. And if you, and some of you did, make your way to the site today, you take your life in your hands once you go from the, the retreat pub to go on down to Parkway. It's just substandard. The County Council know that, and we'll keep, pressing our county councillor now to try and bring it up to date. Uh, could you use the old cliche, which just an accident, a major accident waiting to happen. So there we are. So I want to now move on to land use, because I promised uh, Francis that I wouldn't go on too long, but you know what I'm like. Hold on to greenfields and orchards. A month ago, and I promised you, and I apologise, I made you jump uh, a month ago when I banged the table. Goodness knows what got into me. But there we are. You know how passionate I am about holding on to green fields as much as we can in our villages uh, and communities and all the rest. And that does nothing for my beliefs on, on that. So, and again, it's been discussed anyway, those mature trees in, in the orchard there, we've got to take those into consideration. So that's my land use uh, points being echoed there. And then the uh, uh, amount of development, I've spoken about 2,600 already being built out. Is there a need here? There isn't a, a, as adequate a bus service that we wanted. Uh, to catch the bus, you would have to walk back into Brock Hill, Norton Barracks there, or you've got to go under the motorway to the other side. And I think you've got to jump out into the traffic and hold your hand up there, so that's not the best. You know, not the very best. All right, there's a, there is a bus service of, of, of a sort there, and, and uh, you know, Martin is trying to develop that all, all the time. So Am I allowed to comment on that as well? No. The funding for the bus service runs out in, uh, in six months' time. Thank you. OK, um, I think, to be honest, I commend uh, Gemma for, for writing this report. I think she's wrote it fairly. Whether I agree with it all or not, it, it, it's a very good report. I'm going to leave it to that, Mr Chairman. I, I, I move refusal of this application at this stage, whether I can or not, or I will have to wait for it to come back afterwards. But I just don't see it's necessary to have two halves uh, to determine this application. Two stages. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Adams. Councillor Derby, and then Councillor Dyke, and then uh, Councillor... Yes, well, I, I would like to second it on, on the grounds that I think that location must be interpreted in a common-sense way. And uh, 
to say that if this was in the middle of a special area of conservation of European importance, uh, location wouldn't matter, which is what the officers are arguing, because they're arguing that uh, the same policy which prevents us doing that uh, also prevents us uh, harming a traditional orchard. Uh, it's the same policy of ours, uh, SWDP 22, uh, I think is absurd. And so, I mean, I think Councillor Rowley was absolutely right in raising the issue of location. I think location must be taken, must take account of things like uh, the, the, the proximity of the motorway, but it certainly must take account of the fact that it's in the middle of a site which is designated in our own planning policy and indeed in the national uh, policy uh, framework to the NPPF uh, 180A. Uh, so because when we come to the point, we will have to turn it down on those grounds, it seems absurd that we can't say that this location is unsuitable ab initio, and therefore I'm seconding. Thank you, Councillor Darby. Uh, Councillor Dyke, I think you're next, and Councillor Miller. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to explore uh, briefly, if I can, the comments of um, Councillor Pollard. I think he said that there were three inaccuracies in the report. Uh, one of them, I think, was 60% of this site is in the strategic gap. Um, and he may well have to remind me um, of the others, or unless they, uh, they were written down by the officers. But, I, you know, that's, that's one thing. If that's inaccurate in the report, um, and I can see the way that the, the debate is, is heading, I, I think that could be reasons uh, for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dyke. Councillor Miller. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, what a day we're having. Um, yes. Uh, this location, um, I've actually took the time to go and, and do a measurement, um, a DB measurement at uh, this location. Very similar. And what has pointed me to it was I went to Impany Rise, which we gave um, permission for some years ago in Droitwich. And I took some um, uh, DB levels at that uh, location. And I was very surprised. It was 93 to 95 dB constantly. So I thought I'll have a look at this site. An average of 90 dB. Now, to allow housing to be developed with that constant drone would be detrimental to anybody's mental health. So I, I cannot possibly support this in any way in that location. You, you're not even going to be able to, because of the, the height of the motorway and, and, and that, you're not even going to be able to produce an acoustic barrier at that point. Maybe possible, uh, maybe engineered, but it'd be very costly. Um, so um, because of location and also we've had it mentioned about the orchard. Now, yes, replanting an orchard, but you're not going to give a replanted orchard the quality of diverse bugs and beasties that you're going to get from an old orchard. You can't do that, that takes time. So um, with all in all adding up, I, I will be uh, supporting refusal on this application. Okay, thank you, Councillor Miller. Does anybody else wish to speak on this? Uh, so uh, we've got it proposed and seconded that we should refuse it on the grounds Chairman, of the fact that it is... Can I just have those points answered that I raised that Councillor Pollard... <coughs> Sorry, say again. Well, I raised the points uh, about inaccuracies in the report that Councillor Pollard talked of, and I'd like an answer from the officers on those points, please.
Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, so the, f the, the first point, I think, was that a large proportion of this site is in the significant gap. Um, we, we um, officers are of the view that it's not, that none of the site falls within a significant gap. Um, I think um, we, we, we'll double check that. Sorry? Which, which we will double check on our, on our plans now and on our, on our constraints can ask that to be confirmed. Um, there's apparently the, the, the other mention was about no bus stops. I think an, a, another member has mentioned about the bus stops in the vicinity that there is, is a bus, but it's, I think there was some clarification on that already provided. Um, and oh, yeah, and, the, and the, the, the distance from the station I think was mentioned in terms of the distance being, I think in the report, it was mentioned a mile. Um, I think there's a bit of, I, I mean, we, we'd have to measure, so it's we, we've said a mile. I think the parish council suggests it's a mile and a half. Um, and I don't have any reason to dispute that, so it's it's there may be some variation in in that. Um, I think those were the, the three areas that were, were asked for for clarification. Um, I think if we we'll we'll, we'll check the uh, significant gap thing just so we can confirm, because obviously I don't I don't want to uh, advise members incorrectly without actually checking that for myself as well. But our understanding certainly was that it wasn't, um, and the. I think just the other thing I sort of mentioned in terms of there's been quite a bit of discussion, obviously, about um, the various what 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 you can consider and what you can't consider, um, and and I, you know in terms of the um, permission in principle stage, it is it is it is quite high level, but it is if there are very specific um, constraints of a site that rule out that type of land use. So I I've, I know um, it's been mentioned about the um, the noise from the motorway and and. If um, if members, I mean, the reason we, as officers, we we think it's more appropriate to leave that to technical details consent um, stage is because obviously there will be some technical studies that will be done and we'll give an answer yes or no about the you know the appropriateness of that and there are some design solutions which might address elements of that, but if members were um, of the view that actually there's you know it's totally inappropriate from a land use perspective, that would be a reason that you could sort of re refuse it in relation to land use. So that land use is inappropriate in that location for X, Y, Z, so in this case, you know, motorway. Um, if there is um, protected sites from a European um, protected species or, or other things, that, that could be. I think where it's it's more difficult if it's, if it's just an ecology constraint that might be overcome or could be, I'm not, and we're not saying it definitely would be, um, then it might be harder to refuse something on that because until we have those detailed um, reports, et cetera, to, to clarify either way, it's hard at this stage to rule things out. So it is a really difficult, um, you know, two-stage process. And like I say, that's the reason why the Planning Commission is granted later in the stage about the technical detail consent for that reason. So you don't actually hold any, you know, any planning permission until that later point. Okay, thanks. Yes, Councillor Darby. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I take it that ordinarily we're, what we're looking at is uh, something which a, an ecological survey would pick up. What I'm saying is that this site uh, is one of those that has been designated by Natural England as uh, a... Natural England has a, a magic map on which it shows all the SSSIs uh, and all the other things. Uh, and one of the things that it shows is those which are habitats uh, uh, of principal importance uh, as defined under the NERC 2006 Act. And it's those habitats of principal importance that our policy refers to. And our policy says that we aren't allowed to build on those except in special circumstances. Uh, and, habit, and traditional orchards, these aren't any orchards, these aren't modern orchards, these are sites that have been identified by Natural England as uh, uh, old orchards which have all the features of old orchards which involves old trees and so on. Uh, and I'm not saying that we need a survey to see whether they're on the list uh, in just the same way ancient woodlands are listed by Natural England. Uh, and this is not something listed by Natural England. So prima facie it's a reason, I think, which falls into your earlier category of uh, something which, in principle, it 
shouldn't involve a change of land use. That's my argument. Uh, Maybe that uh, the applicants wanted to challenge uh, Natural England's mapping and so on, but that has never arisen. I'm saying that as things stand at the moment, uh, it shouldn't be eligible for permission in principle. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Darby. Um, if yes. there... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Councillor Darby, if I can just, just sort of like clarify, clarify about permission in principle. Um, and what the guidance states, and then what it goes on to state. If, if you, may. I appreciate what you're saying about um, about being being a, 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 a traditional orchard and that being under Section 41 of the NERC 2006, and appreciate that. Um, guidance actually says permission in principle can't be granted for development which is habitats development, and habitats development is is referred to as habitat sites in the MPPF. When you go to habitat sites, that's obviously in the guidance, and look at what habitat sites refers to specifically. Um, I'm just getting to it now, just bear with me. It refers to, obviously, the Conservation of Habitats and Species Regulations 2017. No, what the guidance says of what a habitat site is for the pur purposes of not being able to grant permission in principle you need to look at what Regulation 8 of the Conservation Habitats and Species Regulation stipulates. And to, be cut, to actually not allow them to be granted permission in principle, it would, Regulation 8 refers to a European site. And a European site is one that's either a special area of conservation, a site of community importance which has been placed on the list referred to of the Habitats Directive, a site hosting a priority natural habitat type or priority species, but that's under the Habitats Directive. Then goes on to say about Wild Bird Directive, a site proposed um, to the European Commission under Reg 12. Well, that won't be that won't be for us. Um, and then it just so Regulation 8 of the Conservation and, and Conservation uh, of Habitats and Species Regs 2017 is the one that you would need to refer to if you were going to be arguing that we can't grant permission in principle for that site. And what you're referring to, being an orchard under Section 41, does not fall within the category of a European site for those purposes of those regulations. You understood what I've been arguing. I, I haven't been arguing uh, that uh, we can't because it's a European site, uh, as uh, you define it. Uh, I'm saying that we can't, under our own policies, ever give it permission because it forms contrary to our own policy, which says that we protect traditional orchards. They're a high priority for us, and that is our policy number uh, SWDP 22, uh, which I think is actually going to be strengthened in the, in the review, but as, as it stands, is that policy. And my argument is that if we have a site which we ourselves, when it comes to considering the uh, nature conservation issues, are bound to refuse, then uh, we can take account of that at this stage uh, as being an unsuitable location. Now, it may be that there is case law which says we can't. I'm just saying common sense would dictate that we should count that as part of the location issue. Uh, but it may, it, it may specifically rule that out. I mean, I, I haven't read the case law. Thank you. I, I, do, I do understand the, the argument made. I, I think the, the, the difficulty in terms of actually sustaining a reason for refusal is I, I believe that until we get the, the, to the next stage and we have that more detailed information to actually rule out all or part of the site, because actually we don't know, although it's, there might be a designation, often on those sites it's, it's not, you know, the orchard might not cover all of it. The, um, the proposals of obviously up to um, four, four dwellings, I think. So if at the technical details, the consent stage, once those surveys come back, it might say none are acceptable or one is or four are, and at that point it, it could be adapted. So I think that's why it's hard to totally rule out the principle at this point. If that makes sense? Uh, yes, I take that point. And so I will withdraw my thing as long as we can uh, immediately issue uh, a tree protection order, which we're allowed, preservation order for orchards, which we're allowed to do, so that the uh, applicants can't cut down uh, 
the trees. I mean, we had this issue before uh, when uh, there is a huge incentive to applicants, obviously, to cut down a, a traditional orchard uh, unless we put a, a, a tree preservation order on it, which we are entitled to do. Uh, so I would ask uh, that uh, we, we, we consider that as a council policy. Councillor Darby, are you with, <coughs> with, at the moment you've seconded refusal, are you withdrawing your secondment of refusal or are you still persisting with that? To say? Well, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I'll still second Okay. In that case, then, if there are no more speakers, we have. Okay. Um, So just, just to clarify on the, the tree preservation order as well, um, we, we obviously can't guarantee because that would need to be assessed, but we, we can certainly speak to our tree officer and ask that that site be, be assessed from that perspective. Okay, thank you. But notwithstanding that, that last exchange, we still have on the table a proposal for refusal, um, which has been proposed by Councillor Adams and seconded by Councillor Derby, um, largely now, I think, on the basis of it being an unsuitable location. That's, I think, that's the, the, the key to it now, I think. So I think that's what we're going to have to take a vote on. Okay. Um, Councillor Adams, we need to be, I'm told we need to be a little bit more specific as to why we deem it an unsuitable location. Um, at the moment, I've only got proximity to motorway as what you might call a fairly substantial reason. I can't remember if you had any other issues um, as to why it was an unsuitable location other than the, the issue we've just talked about with Councillor Derby. There's a lack of amenities around there, which I, I mentioned. No library, no shop. Um, and what else have I got down? Uh, yeah, the bus service, as Martin uh, reminded me, you know, we've only got funded for that for another six months. So really, uh, you know, no immediate bus stop. Um, so, they've got sorry. to walk one way or the other. Um, okay. So on amenities, I think we are very short. So in, in planning terms, you're saying it's an unsustainable location? Mm. Yeah, OK. Thank, thank you. I, I, <laughs> so, so it's have to come back. I, th I think that one of the difficulties we have, the site does fall within one of you know the, the um, uh, one of the South Worcestershire urban allocations, so it's within a development boundary. Yes, I understand. So, and, and I know I know you sort of acknowledge that some of the points that common sense and other elements don't always fit, fit together, but purely on a policy basis, it's within a development boundary. And development within within um, an urban extensions development boundary, it would be very hard to say that that's not not um, a sustainable location, even if we acknowledge that there's um, there is um, some going to be some reliance on on the car, it's it's shorter journeys, etc. But it's it would be very hard given that pure policy uh, view of it. Um, to, to sustain, like I say, to, to sustain a in principle objection, it is quite hard at, this, at that point because. It being within a development boundary, that it's already got a certain level of in principle, um, in the general sense, that that development is okay. So from the locational side of things, I think it's really hard. I think the 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 land use point, which is is obviously something you, you've raised in relation to the the motorway, is is a fact, and that is a constraint, and that won't change, and that's that's something quite different to locational. But I'm just again, it's it, they, these it, 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 how how you what you put forward is clearly up to you but I think the locational argument is really very difficult to make and would be very difficult to defend that appeal the the um the the other areas like I say the, the noise and the motorway and proximity and the land use being inappropriate might be more more sensible for for, for that point even even though like some elements might be addressed at, at the technical detail consent but if members were very certain that that site's inappropriate then that's you know that that's a view that they could take Tried to avoid uh, using the expression "need" because I didn't think we could, you know, bring that forward. But the fact is, you know, 2,600 just down the road, the emerging South Worcestershire development plan the other way. You know, it, 
you know, there isn't any. And the windfalls that came, you know, the report from the the neighbourhood plan, you know, we were short of one house. Since that, we've had about a dozen windfalls in the parish, you know, so we're in infilling, which we've supported. But Yeah, OK. Um, can, I, can I just come... I'd ask you to expand on that last point, Kieran. You mentioned SWDP. What about the argument that says, but hang on, SWDP is out of date. We haven't got a five year land supply, so boundaries are irrelevant. In fact, all the policies are irrelevant. We're straight into the tilt of balance, and arguments such as Adrian's arguing about the, about the orchard can be put into the tilt of balance as a, a disbenefit, regardless of what the policy, whether or not it's policy compliant or policy non compliant. Yeah, I mean, I think in this case, the fact that the development, even if it, if it is a, a field, it is within a development boundary. So it's already got an acceptance to a degree in, in principle for development. On top of that, of course, if it was open countryside, you'd have the, you've got the tilted balance applied to all types of developments anyway, which weigh in favour of, of approving um, a less demonstrable harm. Um, so so that's, that is relevant. Um, so that does, again, add in favour of, of, of supporting the proposals. Um, however, if there is a, you know, if we had a, a clear highways reasons for refusal that was a technical, you know, that we, we could demonstrate or, or other things, then that wouldn't necessarily mean we would support the principle. But I think at this point in time, there isn't any clear evidence to say, you know, that, that, that there's going to be something that's fundamentally rules out development on this site. And I think that's the first stage. But like we said, there's a lot of hurdles to go at the technical details consent stage. Um, which may, which the, the scheme may, may or may not fail on, um, and I think that's the, the difficulty. Is at this point we don't really have all the information that we would like. It's not like the out, like an outline permission where we have all these surveys up front. We'll have a drainage, so you know, drainage strategy. We'll, we'll have an ecological survey. We'll have a highways, um, some more information on highways, whether that's a traffic survey or whatever. Um, but at the, at, at the permission in principle, it's it's almost you, you're doing it blind to a degree until that technical detail is consent, and that's why I think you know, understandably, members are, are, are struggling to sort of reconcile some of these gaps and, and feel like we, we don't have enough information to make a, a decision. But unfortunately, that's the legislation that we're, we're sort of lumbered with. Mr. Chairman, can I just come back? Oh, I'm only a simple guy, you know that. I, I see our planning. <laughs> People here under so much pressure and so much catch-up needed and all the rest of them, working all the hours as God sends to try and get these applications through. And to me, this application, I think other members feel the same. It'll fail at the next thing. I'm almost 100% sure, especially if it comes back to this committee, or I suppose it'll be a new committee when it does come back. And I just think, you know, we determine and refuse it today to save officers time about coming back and writing another report and all the rest of it. But if you think you're coming over as you don't think our refusal reasons are strong enough, which is a shame. Um, I just feel we're going to make extra work with two stages. I think, you know, and I, I, I appreciate that. I think the, the other, other side of things, obviously the, the applicant would have the right to appeal any decision. And I think... I think it's it's very very likely in this case that they would exercise that right. I mean, I can't speak for them, but um, you know, so so unless we've got sort of solid grounds, that's really where I'm I'm concerned at, and that's why I'm sort of flagging flagging those things up. Um, again, I'm not suggesting that, it, that there's a lot of issues to deal with later at the second stage. So I'm not. It's not the green lights necessarily. It's 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 more. Um, the situation we're currently in and what we're able to consider today is, is very limited. So it's, it's, more, it's more that than anything else. OK, thank, thank you, Karen. However, I think we're, we can't put off the moment where we have to vote on this one. And uh, I think... Well, you drew a distinction between location and land use. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, we can own location, uh, when I was talking about uh, uh, biological importance of the site, uh, it didn't qualify for location uh, because it wasn't a European site. Uh, but can we still use the argument uh, that uh, it's inappropriate land use of 
because uh, at the moment it's a traditional orchard, even though such an orchard is only protected by our policies and not uh, by uh, European ones. I mean, by so Can we... it fails the location test, but could it pass the land use test? Is what I'm asking. I, th I think the, 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 the land use is, is um, I, I don't think we, we could, no, again, for the, for the reasons in terms of resisting the principle of development, that we don't, we don't have enough information to say that it categorically rules, it, rules the principle of development out. So it's purely for that. It may, again, I know we, we, we're, we're sort of reliant on the next stage to actually assess that, but it might be that it does rule it out. But at this point, we just can't, we can't um, really put a reason for refusal together that we could justify from the evidence. And essentially, it would go to, you know, potentially go to appeal and an inspector would look at it and say, well, yeah, it will be dealt with at the technical consent stage one way or another. Um, and, and that's probably where we'd end up, unfortunately, on, from that perspective. So um, I, I think if if we do move to, um, obviously, we will move to the, the vote on, on, on the um, on the current motion, but, but we do need to be quite clear about what the... Um, what the re refusal reasons are for, for for everyone, including the the applicants and officers, to make sure that we we catch them in terms of what's being proposed, and, and so members are pre understand what they're they're all all voting on as well. Um, so I think we might have to come back in a minute just to clarify, unless there's any other points that, that need raising first. Do you wish to clarify, or are you happy to go straight to a vote? <coughs> Sorry, I'm, we're sitting here, going round in circles. Uh, essentially what we're saying is it's very difficult to vote against a PIP. And the, the expression common sense was used by Rob, quite rightly so, but it doesn't apply in planning matters. So are you basically saying, Kieran, really, essentially, we ought to actually approve this, even though all of us are feeling at the next stage it will fail, which strikes me as quite bizarre, but is that basically what you're saying? I mean, I mean that, that, that's essentially it. We, we don't we don't know the uh, what what may or may not come about at the next stage, but um, we we can we're quite limited on what we consider, and what we can consider is is very focused. Mr. Miller, yeah, I think we should test this with a vote, Chairman, and see where we go to from there, um, and uh, and move on with business. I think that's absolutely right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to suggest we move to a vote. Yeah, we just need the we need to just nail, nail down the reasons. Um, just yeah. So. Oh, okay. Well, as as I understand it, the reasons we've got at the moment are unsuitable location, largely because of its proximity to the motorway, and inappropriate land use, largely because of the presence of an ancient orchard. I think that's that's basically the. Councillor Dyke. Can we not add to that? Inaccuracies in the report. No, I don't think so. Can we not add inaccuracies in the report? One specific one about the strategic gap and sustainability. I mean, they're quite important things. Sustainability of location was another. Okay. Are you? Have you captured? Have you managed to capture? Yeah. I mean, we, we we do need so we, we need to relate it to to policies as well um, in terms of the um, sustainable location. Like, like like I mentioned, the locational side of things, it's really difficult because it's within a development boundary. So I think we're on a you know there is costs likely to be awarded against the council. So that's a, a warning at appeal. So if you do do you you, you can do that. Um, you would refer to probably SWDP four in relation to transport. Because I think that's probably it's more the transport side in terms of how you access services, so it, it, it's that that kind of thing, um, and then from um, from the um, land use perspective, again we, we've talk, talked about the um, motorway constraints. So I think that's um, there, there is a policy. I'm just on um, on contamination. I just need to find the, the policy reference, which I'll, I'll do in a minute, which includes noise. Um, so there is a, a policy basis on that. I think we've talked about the protected, um, the, the orchard, and I think, again, that's really, really difficult. And we, we're probably, again, in, in cost territory on, on that one as well, because um, it's not a matter that we could categorically rule out development on that site, even though it might um, it might constrain part of the development. 
but I think I think it's very hard until we get to the technical detail consent to to include include that. So out, out of the the three areas, the only one I really think that we we, we could make a case is is the M5 land use um, point. Um, so my advice would not be to pursue the other two because they will will be difficult and they will be picked up anyway at the technical detail consent stage. Um, but but um, it's obviously a matter for members and and obviously you've heard the costs of, um, cost uh, award potential uh, warning as well, which I obviously need to to make you aware of. Okay, Councillor Adams, you're the proposer of the motion. Are you happy to go ahead on the basis of what Kieran's just outlined? Well, I am. I know better than members. You know, I, I'm just one member of the panel, but I, I just, uh, I, I've said it all before. I'd, I'd like us to go forward on, on if it, if Kieran thinks that we should just go with proximity to the motorway, and that's why I wanted the site visit. That's what it's all driven by. Okay. Well, in that case, I think we're going to have to go to a vote. Um, I just need to clarify the policy. Sorry. Sorry. Members, just in clarification, obviously, if you're going to have a, a, a motion to, um, a contrary to officer recommendation, we obviously have to have reasons, but they also need to be policy reasons. Um, and obviously, what Councillor Adams has put forward as the, a mover of the motion is, as, as Kieran's outlined, is, is the land use, the proximity of the, the motorway and the constraints from that perspective um, and the noise. Uh, so I'm just outlining the policies now, which are... Oh, it's SW, uh, okay. SWDP 31, which relates to uh, the noise issue. Yeah, so do you mind if I... Yes, I'll of just, course. Sorry, just, just, to, just to clarify. So it, the um, this policy relates to pollution and land instability, but it covers a wide range of things. And it, the in, importantly, its um, development proposals must be designed in order to avoid any significant adverse impacts from pollution um, and pollution, we include noise within that. Um, there's a number of other lists, but it, it's a type of, um, in terms of the noise and disturbance generated by the motorway, that's the conflict with the proposed land use that we, we that members have, have potentially, um, that the motion has identified. So that's the policy that I'd, I'd be referring to um, from that perspective. And, and potentially SWDP 21 as well, we should include that because that that captures residential amenity and essentially we're saying that they're not compatible and that the um suitable residential amenity or level of of amenity could not be achieved on that site okay right thank you very much so can we move to a vote uh, Dawn, please? just in clarification councillor adams as the mover of the motion uh you're refusing and it's contrary to policy because the um application is contrary to policy swdp 31 and policy SWDP 21, uh, which obviously relates to pollution and residential amenity, um, which would, would concur with what you said previously. Are you happy with those two reasons for refusal? Thank you. And, and the second, a councillor Derby. Thank you. So we have a motion on the table to refuse, uh, contrary to officer recommendation, with the two reasons for refusal put forward. Those in favour, please hold your cards up now. That's 10 for uh, against. And abstentions, one. That motion to refuse is carried. Thank you. OK, thank you. <coughs> uh, we now move to our, our final item. Uh, Sorry, Mr Chairman, a quick point to order. I've, I've got to go to another quick meeting with an officer elsewhere, so I'll have to miss this part of the meeting. I do apologise. But they are... Ex I do apologise. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Councillor Sinton.
Okay, um, we have no speakers um, on this item, uh, so uh, we'll go straight into officer's presentation. So, Gavin, over to you. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a site at Back Lane, Camerton, and officers under delegated powers have previously granted approval for the demolition of the existing or previously existing bungalow on the site and its replacement with the Cotswold Stone House. And what you've got before you today is what's known as a Section 73 application, which is an application that seeks to vary some of the details of that previous consent for the replacement house. It doesn't revisit the principle of a replacement house in that location. Um, the changes that are sought are set out on pages 287 and 288 of the agenda. A new carport, some new roof lights and windows, um, a smaller basement space and uh, absorption of the integral garage into the main accommodation of the house um, and its replacement with, with the external carport. So those are the changes that the council is tasked basically with considering in this application, not, not the principle of the replacement house on the site. So that was the previously approved layout, <coughs> roughly L-shaped new house in that white kind of outline there. The bungalow was on the back part of the site where it's shaded green and now they want to go to this where you can see the carport, that little rectangle in the top right, footprint of the house stays the same. Um, the, the driveway and so on stays the same as well. And then what you'll see at this scale at least isn't particularly clear, but you'll see a very similar previously approved set of elevations to the ones that they want to um, implement now. If you look at the top two images, you'll see some roof lights on that um, facing roof slope in, in, into the site, whereas there weren't any previously. And I think the addition of some windows on one of the gay blends so it's all fairly minor stuff. And the size of the basement on the previously approved plan, you can see at the bottom of those three floor plans there, it was quite large. It went under the entire footprint of the house. And because of costs, they want to reduce that to the smaller near rectangular shape you see at the bottom there. So that was what was previously approved. And that's what they want now. So it's a much smaller basement. Um, the previous permission has been commenced, we think, by virtue of the fact the bungalow has been demolished already. That's what the site looks like now. Uh, it's a corner site on as you enter the village um, along Back Lane. That's the nearest neighbouring property, so they're going very much in the style of the, the neighbour, apart from the thatched roof. And uh, that's the, 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 the view of the site from the, 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 the junction as you enter the village. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gavin. Anybody wish to speak on this item? No? Well, Councillor Rowley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this would have been dealt with under delegated powers had it not been relative to a councillor, so I'm happy to move approval in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Is there a second, Councillor Mrs. Eyre? Happy to second. Okay, thank you. We'll go straight to the vote then. Go on, you take a vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Oh, we've got very keen members today. I haven't even, even said what it is. OK. The, uh, moved and seconded in accordance with the officer recommendation. Those in favour, four. Hold your cards up. Oh, absolutely unanimous. Thank you very much, members. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your patience. And, uh, it was quite a... <laughs> see, see you next time.